Row 9 on the ST grid. Roy Block will start the C360R Audi S3. That is car number 75. And Aristotle Bailo in car number 81 for Bimmer World Racing. That is a BMW 328i. Row 8 in ST. Car number 63, another newcomer this season. Uh, this race, I should say. David Askew alongside the veteran po Aaron Povoledo in the Kenzai DXDT Racing Porsche Cayman. And Ari Strauss. Aurora Strauss, excuse me, in car number 18 for RS1 in the Porsche Cayman. Row 7 is Jarek Zielinski, car number 52 of the many JCW team, and Brent Mosing will cut start car number 65 from Murillo Racing. Row 6, Liam Dwyer in the Freedom Autosport Mazda MX-5 car number 26, and Mike Lamara making his 50th start in the Connell Tire Sports Car Challenge in car number 37, that's a mini JCW. Row 5 on the grid, Michael Johnson paralysed from the chest down, if you could believe it, in the JDC Miller Motorsports BMW 228i, that is car number 54, qualified in the top 10 in ST. And another debutant this weekend, Matthew Fasnax, in car number 27, a Mazda MX-5, Freedom Autosport. Similar car of Chad McCombie will start on the outside of row four in ST, car number 25, is a, a car that was uh, crashed yesterday, but they've taken over an, a, a spare car from another team. Car number 31 is a Drake Kemper for the Body Motion Racing Porsche came in car number 31. Row three on the outside, car number 34, Christopher Stone, Marilla Racing Master MX-5, and Sarah Catania in car number 44, that is the CRG I Do Borrow Nissan Altima. The second row in ST, Jeff Mosing, recovered from his incident yesterday. Car number 56, Marilla Racing Porsche Cayman, and the Boomer World Racing BMW 328i. Car number 84 is Tyler Cook. And on the front row in ST, Derek Jones, pole sitter last season. Reckon he should have had the pole this season, but didn't. He will start on the outside of the front row in the number 73 Mini JCW. And on the pole for the first time in his career, the defending series champion, along with Spencer Pampelli, it will be Nick Gallant that starts the Porsche Cayman RS1 team Car number 17. Moving on to the GS field. Car number 7, Chris Hall and Alan Brilliolfsson from Iceland, who will start in number 7, Volt Racing, McLaren 570S GT4. Moving on to the seventh row of the grid, Rod Randall, Dr. Rod Randall, in car number 68, the Motorsports in Action, McLaren GT4. Then the car number 21, Chuck Quinton, aboard the Mule, the Motorsports America, Porsche came in GT4. Two more Porsche came as on row 6. Ted Giovannis will start car number 46 for Team TJM, and Russell Ward aboard the number 35 for CJ Wilson Racing. On to row five, defending race winners, Cameron Castles, along with Trent Hinman, it will be the Canadian Castles, who starts the body motion racing Porsche came in car number 12, alongside him, Matt Keegan, in car number 77 for three C360R, McLaren GT4, they finished second last time out at Circuit of the Americas. Till Bechtelsheimer will start the CJ Wilson racing Porsche came in car number 33, on the outside of row four, alongside him, Matt Bell, in the Stevenson Motorsport Chevy Camaro GT4R, making just its second start in the Intercontinental Dark Sports Car Challenge. Row three on the outside, Steve Phillips filling in for Rob Eklin Jr. this weekend for automatic racing. The Aston Martin Vantage V8, car number 99, and 28 Dylan Murcott, the RS1 Porsche Cayman. Similar car, Team TGM, Hugh Plum are in the fourth position alongside Jesse Lazar from Canada. The Motorsports in action, McLaren onto the front row, Jack Rouse Jr in the core motorsports Ford Mastodon GD4 and on the pole for the third time in his career, the second in consecutive races. Race winner last time out, Paul Holton in the McLaren C360R in car number 76. Brilliant stuff, Jeremy Shaw. Two formation laps are complete and that means our pool drivers are bringing the cars around. Paul Holton and Jack Rouse Jr. 76 and 59. McLaren and Ford, McLaren and Porsche. The second row, Jesse Lazar and Hugh Plum. Take a deep breath. Get on the edge of your seat, because that's where you're going to be for the next two hours as we're getting ready for the Continental Tire 120. The Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge at the Glen is under starters orders the green flag is in the air from john mayer from continental tire and we are racing and down towards the first corner paul holton in the mclaren on the right hand side of the starting grid makes a fabulous start jesse lazare follows him through almost gets his nose ahead of jack rouse jr in the 59 ford in second place but doesn't quite make it three wide coming through the first corner it's 
just about everybody has made it and big thumbs up from Jeremy Shaw alongside me John Hindorf we're live trackside at Watkins Glen International already side by side action with Sarah Catania in the Nissan Altima the 44 car through the S's that's a good strong move from Sarah early on and she's trying to push her way past the Porsche of Drake Kemper, and I think she might have just got the nose of the Nissan ahead. The bonnet just flapping slightly in the breeze as she goes into the S's, excuse me, into the inner loop for the first time. 56, Jeff Morsing leading after, well, just quite an awful looking accident yesterday. Fantastic that he's there. Eric Voss thinking he might get the championship lead on his own after this. Jeff says, no thanks, mate. I'm going to come and drive the car. Meantime, down towards turn. Seven, the tour of the boot for the first time. McLaren, Ford, McLaren, Porsche, Holton, Jack Rouse Jr., Lazar, and Hugh Plum. 76, 59, 69, and four. Nice clean start. Everybody settling in nice and early. Dylan Merkett is the man on the move at the moment, trying to get alongside Hugh Plum. Doesn't quite make it as he goes into turn eight. Take a breath, Jeremy, because we've got round three quarters of the first lap. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, great to see. A big relief there, I'm sure, for a lot of folks on pit lane as well. A really good, nice, clean start there. Great effort by Paul Holton to put this car on the pole position. Uh, he's a young uh, talent, is Paul Holton. He will hand over that car to the most, uh, the most, uh, the winningest, if you like, the most successful driver in Colonial Tire Sports Car Challenge history. That'll be Matt Plum for the closing stages of this race. But it is going to be our pole sitter, Paul Holton, who will complete lap one in the lead of this two-hour race. Live in sound and vision across the world. No geo blocks, no interruptions, no excuse to miss this race. Wherever you are, hope you're tuned in to IMSA.TV or on the app because this one is set to be a barnstormer. Sarah Catania goes to the right in front of us and gets past one of the masters. That was uh, the Chris Stone car, the 34 machine, and that is a position made up. Sarah Catania a little bit disappointed. She was on for a pull lap in qualifying, uh, had a solid second place on the grid as into the pit lane. Finish that story in the moment. Comes the one of the new entrants, the 47 Mini. So the coral-coloured car with the Rear roof for Team Octane, Adam Isman and Azan Luzer in the car. Now, that looks like a drive through for me. Let me get back to the Sarah Catania story. Sarah had qualified, looked like she was qualifying in a solid second and going for pole position. The car ran out of fuel on what would have been a pole lap. Now, that caused a red flag at the end of the session. Therefore, she was docked her fastest lap and dropped well down the field. But she is on a mission at the moment and has just gone past the BMW. That was Tyler Cook mm. that she's gone by. Now, Tyler Cook was in second. So has Sarah fought her way through that far? No, Tyler Cook's got a problem. The 84 BMW is slow, very slow indeed, down towards turn number six. Maybe a right rear tyre or wheel issue. He's struggling, yeah, Ooh. he has. In fact, the wheel's off, the tyre is off. It was the left-hand side. Now, has he still got a wheel on that or has the whole assembly come off? The tyres made a bid for freedom. Successfully. Where's that come from? I... That was the other car. That was... Ah, that's the other Pimmer yeah. World car. That's why I couldn't see that one. Definitely an issue with a whole wheel. It's a whole wheel that has come off one of the cars, and I'm pretty certain that that was the 84 BMW. Yes, it was. It's the right front. So five lug nuts there have not been enough to keep that wheel in captivity under the wheel arch, under the fender. And that is a disaster for the 84 Bimmer World BMW, which was in second position. Sarah Catania has fought her way up to fourth in the 44 Nissan. Uh, there looks to be some bolts still on that rim. That might have just pulled the centre of the wheel as through goes the Octane Mini, having done its drive-through. And we've got the 37 Mini with a problem. Now, that's down on its right-hand side. Has there been some contact there? Then, um, this is well, supposition. That number 84 car, that, uh, that's got to be... Uh, the, the wheel nut appears to have come off that uh, left front wheel. Uh, so uh, The Mini the, stopped. Yes, the, it the has. The Mini has stopped in the braking area for Turn 1. 68 McLaren oh, going in again. the pit lane. Mini has started going again. Control alt delete. Now it seems to be no, accelerating that, properly there, doesn't it? That's all right. Maybe maybe he hit the pit lane speed limit or, or something yeah, like that. Or, or the kill switch somehow. Yeah. Now the 84 car with Tyler Cook turned into turn number six and the front wheel just 
disappeared. What threw me out was his teammate going round the outside of him and actually nearly fell off the track. And I thought that was the 84 car. It wasn't. It was actually the team car. And Tyler was on the other side of the track trying to stay out of everybody's way. Never a good day when parts of the car are doing different lap times to the bit that you're sitting in. In comes the 84 car, he's made it into the pit lane, we have stayed green. Yeah, that BMW World team has just had no luck no at luck. all this season. They've always been fast, uh, and it was a great start there by Tyler. He uh, started third, moved up to second on the first lap. A great start, by the way, from Jeff Mosing to leap that class. What a great effort by him, as the pole sitter fell back to uh, third. Now up to second, however, and the race leader at the front. It's still the same order at the front. The top uh, five, six positions all remaining the same. Stevenson Motorsport Camaro next up. Uh, let's go down to our Continental Tire Pit Lane reporting team. And uh, Jim Roller, first of all, is at McLaren, where that car is in the pit lane. 68 car has come in, and they've got an electrical problem. Uh, the, one of the co-drivers is coming around with a laptop. They're doing, literally doing a control-alt-delete because the car has gone into emergency mode. They also had to bleed the front brake. So lots of issues on the 68. Let's go to Shay. Down here at the 84 Bimmer World, they were really hoping that they would just be able to put the car up on its jack stands and put a new left front Continental tire onto the car. The engineer, as soon as they jacked it up, looked at it and gave a shake of his head, indicating this is not going to work. He ran back over to the pit wall to talk to everybody, and they said, try it anyway. He can't actually get the wheel properly seated, so he's now slamming the wheel. But when it came into the pit lane, the BMW was actually driving on the left side side of its nose. There is no bodywork damage to this car, though. If they can get the wheel back on and get it to stay, Tyler should be able to fight his way back. Good work by yeah. both of those teams. I I'm not sure there wasn't some hub damage there, although it's now sitting on four Continental tyres. 69 McLaren in third position. Jesse Lazare in a little bit of clear air at the moment, chasing down Jack Ranch Jr. in the Ford, and the McLaren of Paul Holton. Big gap behind Jesse Lazare to Hugh Plum. First two, though, are still battling it out, but they have pulled away just a little bit. The Coeur Motorsports uh, run Ford, sitting in second place between those two uh, rather more exotic and svelte-looking McLarens around it. Number 68, McLaren, the motorsport and action car is on pit lane. Number 47 has resumed at the back. He's about to go a lap down. If there is any good news for the number 84 car, it is that that left front wheel came off cleanly, if you like. It didn't take anything else with it. It came off all of a sudden and didn't, uh, like I say, damage anything else around it, apparently. So with a bit of luck, they'll uh, be able to get back in this race, and they will probably need a full course caution to assist them in doing that. But if the car isn't too badly damaged, uh, they, they should have the speed. Yeah, agree with that. Should have the speed. Uh, already 10 minutes burned. Paul Holton pulling away from the team. Uh, from the rest of the field, just seven and a half tenths between him and the rest of the field in ST. Jeff Morsing from Nick Gallant from Sarah Catania now up in the third position and gaining on the leaders. A couple of tenths, but she's got Jeff Morsing in sight. She has dealt with Nick Gallant actually. Catania then up the second as she goes past us. That must have been in the last third of the lap. So Sarah Catania is really on a tear at the moment in that 44 purple Nissan Altima. The two Mazdas, well, three Mazdas actually in pretty close company, but the 25, uh, the 34, the 25, and the 27 sitting in 18th, 19th, and 20th, or if you prefer, 5th, 6th, and 7th position, are almost a 12 wheel Mazda train. Indeed, and that number 25 car uh, that is running in the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th, 6th position, that is Chad McCombie. That's not normal colours of that car. If it looks like it looks like it's very similar colours to the car in front of it, well, that's because. It's the, regular it's the regular team car of the 34. It generally runs as a 43 car, but they had a big crash yesterday in the practice session for, for Chad McCombie. They've had brake problems all weekend at, at the Freedom Auto Sport team. One of the cars crashed uh, in the first session. That would have been Brick Casey Jr., kind of a 27. They got that car repaired, but, uh, but uh, Steve McAleer, who had the crash yesterday in the number 25 car, that car was very, very badly damaged. Uh, to, particularly to the front left corner, and the wheel was literally oblong uh, on that car when it came away. It's absolutely remarkable. I'm not sure I've seen that before. Packing but the team, they borrowed this car from the n number 43 team. That's Murillo Racing, similar car, a Mazda. And boy, Chad McCombie has really got to rip through it very, very quickly. 
56, Jeff Morsing in the Porsche leads from Sarah McIntyre by about 1.6 seconds. And Sarah has clearly been let off the leash here, a very, very accomplished driver. Jeff Morsing, I can't believe that he's not suffering from some after effects from the Porsche Cup crash in the race that wasn't a race yesterday. His car destroyed Trixie. Name given. Oh, and Sarah catania has got a problem. Catania having fought her way up into second place in class as the 69 McLaren is rolling. Sarah Catania is in the pit lane. In the pit lane for the 44 Nissan Altima. And just when she was starting to make some kind of inroads on the leader, she is in the pit lane. Shea Adam is with a a team that we're not expecting to see this 44 car, Shea. They are not preparing for her to actually stop in the pit box, John. This might be a penalty served for the number 44. I'm just waiting to see if she goes back she out. She has. Yeah, you're yep. right. She went all the way back out the other end of the pit lane. I was a little bit worried that she might be making that right hard turn back to the garage area. But no, she is back out on track. I'll try and figure out what that was for. I'm guessing jump start. Yeah, so am I. Yeah, jump start is what I'm uh, guessing. Jesse Lazare on for a good lap here in third position. So all that hard work by Sarah has come to nothing and she has dropped now from second position uh, all basically, the way down. Basically to last. Uh, I think she got out in front of a couple, but not very yeah, many. She a couple of delayed cars, yes. Yeah, she go ahead. Uh, just said to Owen Trankler really quick, what was all that about? He said it was a clutch. Uh, Sarah's having issues out there with the clutch, you said, but uh, why did she come in the pit lane? I. No, I don't really know that answer. She probably should have stayed on track there, but she was fighting that issue and stuff with the clutch. But we'll, uh, we'll get her time in. We'll soldier through this. We had this happen a couple of years ago, and I'll get in and we'll uh, we'll make it happen to the end. Yeah, hopefully, you can see the checkered flag. Yeah, we need to big time today, and uh, we got to gather some points. We had a bad race at Coda, so we can't fall out here today. And got to say happy birthday to my wife, but she's out here with the kids today. So hopefully, we'll we'll get back and you know back in contention here. Yeah, better luck. That's Owen Trinkler in the number 44. Oh, so there is a mechanical issue, and the ultimate is not back up to speed. You can drive a car without a clutch once it's rolling. The problem is if it's slipping, it's taking away power from the driven wheels, and at that point, you are in a mess of trouble. Um, having had to drive cars with worn clutches in the past, she's got to get through her 45 minutes and Owen will try and get that car to finish. The 84 car, by the way, back out on track for Tyler Cook. That was the car that was. The other car, what happens, you get the second and it all goes wrong. That was the car, the BMW was in second and lost a wheel. Sarah Catania fights to second in ST and then loses a clutch. Uh, at the moment, Nick Gallant will be keeping his fingers crossed. He's 3.2 seconds behind Jeff Morsing, but he's 3.2 seconds ahead of Dre Kemper in the 31 Porsche. ST has Porsche, 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 56, 17, and 31. And then the Mazda triplets, Chad McCumbie in the 25, Chris Stone in the 34, and the 27, it's uh, Michael Fasnacht, isn't it? Uh, Matt Fasnacht, thank you, uh, in that car. And now, Sarah Catania is back in the pit lane again, and this is a drive-through. Presumably, she's been penalised for coming into the pit lane and not stopping at her pit which you're not allowed to do. That's the only thing I can think about there. Says Heindorf remembering the last time that he read the rule book. So, 15 minutes in, Jeremy, and here's how it stands at the top of the field. Just nine tenths of a second, Paul Holton leads for the 76E 360 R McLaren from the Co Motor Sport Ford. The 59 car in second with Jack Rouse Jr. Jesse Lazare for McLaren number 69, sitting in third position, about two seconds further back. Then it's a three and a half second gap to the four, the Ted Giovannis Racing, uh, Motorsport rather, TGM. Hugh Plum at the wheel of that car. He's got a bit of trouble behind him in the shape of Dylan Merker in the 28. Yeah, he wants to get past. He, he does, does. Uh, just a, a bit. For, for uh, fourth and fifth places. And a little bit of a gap back to Matt Bell in that still new, of course, Stevenson race. Stevenson Motorsports Camaro GT4R. That car made its debut in the last race at Circuit of the Americas. So very uh, early in a development period for that car. 
Yeah, in this championship, as you pointed out the other day, Jeremy, it has uh, been doing fairly sterling work in the shorter sprint series in the World Challenge. And uh, that's kind of worked for them. In fact, Lawson Aschenbach, I think, leading that championship. They just yep. don't seem to be able to make it work. Gearbox overheating it quarter and I had similar issues here early in the week and then all of a sudden it found its feet Matt Bell starting in sixth or starting the car is in sixth position at the moment just ahead of Matt Keegan till Bechtelsheimer in eighth for CJ Wilson racing leaders in traffic already yeah uh, Jack Ralph Jr. hanging right there, isn't he, in second place uh, behind Paul Holton. New fastest lap of the race last time around for Jesse Lazare in third place in that number 69 McLaren. So he's looking good. Uh, Jack Ralph Jr. is his birthday tomorrow, so he would love nothing better than uh, to get at least a podium finish. A yeah. great run in qualifying yesterday by Jack Jr. because they, he, the, the car hadn't shown that sort of pace through the practice sessions. Jack put it together, now he's hanging with the leader. Man on the move at the moment, Derek Jones in the number 73 Mini JCW team. He's disposed of one of the Mazdas he was sitting in behind, that of Brett Morsing in the 65 car. And now he's up against the 34, which is the Marillo Racing, the other Marillo Racing car, which has got Christopher Stone behind the wheel. And he's giving that a good shot as well. Just dropped back off at the moment. Jeff Morsing still leading that category and pulling away. Nick Gallant in second has dropped to over three seconds behind in second place. Yeah, STD. Just, just a little bit. Just, uh, yeah, just a couple smidge. of tenths a lap or yeah. so. That's Jeff Morsing for you, though. He's relentlessly good. Just keeps chipping away. 25 and 31 coming to the final corner together. And they're battling for position. That is Drake Kemper and Chad McCombie. Drake in the Porsche number 31, Chad McCombie in the Mazda. And through as well, here comes that Mini. Yeah, and closing on that, uh, that little gap. Uh, Mini's battle. gone through. Yeah, it has. Yeah, Chauncey's no. gone through. And what was interesting there, the, the, the Porsche came just coming out of the final car and just powered past the Mazda. And the Mini does the same. Well, side by side, going up through the S's and the Mazda just a little bit more nimble. My goodness, that Mini looks huge compared to the Miatas, the MX-5. They are NC cars as well, not the new, newest shape of cars. Bit of drafting going on. Not sure how much effect that is from the Mazda MX-5 to the Mini. But Derek Jones has gone through. And that puts him now up into third position in SG. Check that fourth position in ST. His next target will be Drake Kemmer. ST cars are the closest to showroom stock that you'll probably see this weekend. That said, there's a lot of time, effort and finance invested in turning these cars into racing cars. Pretty much always done by the teams. One or two exceptions. This is not, strictly speaking, a manufacturer formula, the ST. These are guys who have taken street cars, sometimes brand new cars, sometimes cars that have been saved from the crusher, saved from a, a life of nothingness or being stripped for parts and turned into very, very impressive race cars indeed. A yeah, great battle this is for third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth and I think probably ninth place as well in ST, the two uh, MX-5s there still more side by side they are going into turn nine. Um, wind has just changed on the front strip but the brollies interestingly are going down the umbrellas are going down. Yeah. Look at that shower it's just past shower, us, just maybe a us. mile to the north of us it's going yeah. just going across Watkins Glen Village right now I think. So 20 minutes gone and the teams on the pit wall will be Watching that clock, 45 minutes is the minimum drive time. And Derek Jones again is the man most likely. He's caught up to Drake Camber, and that would be for third position. I tried to put him in third position at the end of the last lap in that mini. Meantime, the two Mazdas behind, Chad McCumbie and Chris Storm, both for Marillo Racing, just with uh, slightly different colour schemes. One with a white bonnet, one with a black. The 34 is Chris Storm. He's got the white bonnet. And in fact, three Masters, three Masters, almost three Masters wide. And here comes a McLaren as well, joining in there. Yeah. 
and he, he can't, there's no the way. 68 car that's uh, a couple laps off over the lengthy pit stop. Yeah, that is uh, correct, having been into the pit lane. Rod Randall from Florida, the motorsport in action team. He is behind the wheel of that, but you can't get past three Mazdas when they're pretty much side -backs. Oh, big lose for Chris Stone, and somehow he got it back in the inner loop. I think he had to lift there to avoid hitting the back of the 27 car right ahead of him, Matt Fasnacht. And in doing that, he unsettled the car. The car went sideways. It was a brilliant save. Mini, that is the, that's the Coral car, the Octane 47 car, that is just getting a lap put on it at the moment by this battle. What a great battle from third down to effectively seventh and eighth. Here comes the 68 Maka. Rod Randall trying to pick his way through these ST cars. It's not easy, is it? Because they're very nimble, these cars, and they're very late on the brakes. And probably a heck of a sight lighter as well. Bit of healing and towing going on on board the 27. If you don't know what healing and towing is, go and look it up. And go and, drive a proper racing car and too. Go and, yeah, <laughs> go and rent an MX-5 for a weekend yes. and teach yourself how to do it. If you can't heal and tow, you shouldn't be allowed in a race car, even if it has got flappy paddles. It is the mechanism by which you match the revs of the engine to the speed of the road wheels when changing down through the gearbox. And it's that blip of the throttle, and you do that with your right foot whilst you're already braking. So you use the ball of your foot on the middle pedal and the outside of your foot to blip the throttle. It becomes second nature once you've done it long enough. And it's essential, particularly in damp weather, to get that so you don't lock up the rear wheels on downshift. Some cars now do it for you. Cheat. Actually, it's quite cool. Rev match or shift assist, it's often called. Nice consistency at the front of the field by Paul Halton, just oh. uh, taking care of his car a little bit. Well, he's he's just gone past yes. the 27 at Mazda and blasted, blasted past, eased past, going up in towards the inner loop. I uh, think I saw a yellow and red flag on the marshal's post on the outer loop there. I'll check that again next time around. Yeah, Paul Halton goes past the Mazda, and then the Mazda has to lift in the middle of the inner loop because he's taking time through the twisty bits. Magnificent stuff. Second place in ST goes a lap down. That's Nick Gallant in the portion number 17. The RS1, one of the RS1 cars. Nick from Monterey, California, sharing with Atlanta resident Spencer Pumpelli. He'll get into the car yep. to finish the race off. But originally from Connecticut, yeah. uh, Nick Gallant. And Nick Gallant still has his mirrors full of that mini from Derek Jones. Goes to driver's left as they come to turn number nine and rejoin the short course. Amazing, isn't it, that, that such different cars, Jeremy, different philosophies of cars. We've got a rear-wheel drive mid-engine sports car just being overtaken there by a front-wheel drive front-engine city car, really. And the Mini and the Porsche came and going at it again, and Gallant goes down the inside very late in the final corner. They're leaning on each other, and here comes the 25 Master as well. Chad McCumbie has got ahead of Fasnacht, and he's trying to get through. Meantime, here comes the McLaren trying to... Oh, that's the chance for the McLaren to get through, and Rob Randall gets one, two, three, four, five SD cars down the front straight. <laughs> Phew! Well, I, I suspect he was quite enjoying watching that battle. Now coming up is Hugh Plum fourth position in the number four car. That's the very light blue front end with the red accents, red and pink accents, and he's picking his way through in the Cayman GT4 car. He's about uh, a second and a half behind Jesse Lazare, who's already gone through. Just a second at the head of the field, but looks like a traffic jam going into... It is a traffic jam. Well, yes, you're right. You're absolutely right. It, just, it looks like Monday morning on one of the highways. It's absolutely unbelievable going into the inner loop there. Um, however, change in position, and Derek Jones's march towards the front, for that is what it has been in the Mini JCW number 73, uh, continues. 
And he's yeah. now up to second place. Jeff Morsing up the road by about two and a half, three seconds. Yeah, number 73, Mini, had started in second position, slipped back on the first lap. Don't really know what happened there, but he's, since then he's been working his way back up the order. And he's worked past that, uh, that trio of Mazdas all by dicing together there. And finally got past the Porsche Cayman, which clearly has a, a pretty good straight line speed advantage. Doesn't it? Good acceleration from that Cayman. But the Mini is good under cornering and it's, it, it's hopefully will look after its tyres. Matt Bell has just got in front of Dylan Merker in fifth position, the 57, and he has now got five seconds to Hugh Plum up the road. He's coming through that battle, goes past the 31 of Drake Kemper, or at least he's on the tail of that car, He'll do the all out and in as he comes out of nine and towards 10, nicely done. Now he's got the mini, Derek Jones ahead of him, the black, oh, right off the circuit for Bell there on the exit of nine, but he pulls it back on without unsettling the Camaro too badly. Comes onto the start finish line. And Derek Jones is his next target. That's a lapped car, remember. Number 12, Cameron 28 Castles. 28 slow. Oh, right, 28 slow. That was Dylan Merkin, so he'd just been passed by Matt Bell in that uh, GS Porsche. It's one of the other RS1 cars. Dylan Machevin will be jumping in that car later, and that will slow down the front straight in front of us. Meantime, Cameron Castles in ninth position at the moment, with the Stars and Stripes and a bit of the Maple Leaf on, signifying the dual nationalities of the drivers, or the nationalities of both the drivers, should I say. Happy 150th birthday to Canada today. Yes. Paul Holt just easing away. All of a sudden, it's one and a half seconds. Yeah, having uh, got through that traffic, he's just turned his best lap of the race, not the fastest lap of the race, because that still stands to the number 68 car, Jesse Lazare, Set back on lap nine, we've just completed 13 laps. That fastest lap of the race was a 158.287. And, and a, a 58.5 there by Paul Halton. But uh, hanging in there, second place still is Jack Roush Jr. And Justin Lazare, he didn't make his way through that traffic with nearly such alacrity to the two leaders. He's now fallen seven and a half seconds behind. Well, a few moments ago, if I looked to the right from our broadcast centre, it was beautiful weather, which it still is. If I looked to the left, it was awful. But that awful weather has drifted over the top of Watkins Glen and it's dark clouds right above us. And it looks like that could dump any second now. And if it does, it's going to be a lot of water in a short time. That does look like a huge amount of precipitation. Sarah Catania, by the way, is still circulating in the number 44. Had got up to second position. Yeah. Last lap, a 2.13. So off the pace, but getting that car around, needs to make another 14 minutes. Class leader, race leader, 76. Paul Holton in the black McLaren. As the rain begins to spit and spot on the front straight and it's coming down heavier and it's going to be very heavy very quickly this could be carnage out on the track now you've got to trust your driver here paul holton's in the outer loop and it wasn't a slippery surface flag that i saw it was just someone's marker flag on the side of the track did take my eye there it is close to one of the flag stands the lead still one and a half seconds and then seven and a half seconds back to third place. Lazare, 76 McLaren, 59 Ford Mustang, 69 McLaren. And then a further two seconds back, the Porsche, the number four TGM car of Hugh Plum. And he is reveling in these conditions at the moment. Yeah, he is, isn't he? He's uh, running a really fine race. Just said his uh, best uh, first sector time. We'll see with that rain, it's going to affect him. But uh, the guy uh, who is, uh, who's going to say there? Go on. Uh, Devon Jones has dropped way back now from Nick Gallant. Nick Gallant back up in the second and has ten and a half seconds yeah, that, after that issue for the mini. Well, he's been, he's, he, uh, it, it, the gap's been about that, uh, and he's just sort of, now we'll see whether in these conditions, where that mini can haul in the uh, cars ahead of him, because certainly in the, with the front wheel drive, you can see the, the, the wipers wheels are on here. Now. Yeah, the wipers are on, and you can see the wheel tracks 
that the slick tyres are making through the uh, precipitation as they come up to turn 11. It's quite wet as they head on down to turn one. It's going to be tricky down the bottom of the hill here, under braking. Bad news is there's not that much wind. Well, as I say that, the flags begin to pick up from their flag staffs on the paddock awnings across from us here. The lap times are going out. And as they head up through the S's, they are heading into the worst of the weather. It started raining from that end of the track, from the outer loop end of the end of the track, and it's been raining there for a lap or two. And now we can start to see drips and drops on the cameras as well as on our windows. And Sarah Catania has just been lapped by Jeff Mosey. Right, uh, that's on, As they came past it, yes, it is, because uh, that number 44 car is now off the lead lap in ST. So Jeff Mosing, despite these conditions, is really pressing on there, doing a super, super job. 2.13 for Jeff last time around, Sarah. 2.29, that clutch problem really holding her up. And they would have loved this weather. Rattle of thunder above the IMSA Broadcast Centre here at Watkins Glen. Half an hour in, we're not even into driver change time at the moment, and the rain is falling. 26 car, Liam Dwyer, the Mazda, coming in. The rain is falling straight down as the wind doesn't know which way to blow at the moment. We'll keep an eye on the stop for the 26 car. That might just be a set of Continental Wets. Huge slide in the inner loop by Darth Kim and the number 33, Till Bechtelsheimer, who's got Cameron Castles in the 12th Porsche just a couple of seconds further back. Wet and fuel for the 26 car, I'm being told. I think that's smart. It's raining yeah. very heavily on the pit lane. You get the extra fuel, that just gives you more options later in the race. The Mini, well, 73 if, car. And if there is a full course caution, then the, the pits will be closed initially, and that car will have already made its pit stop. Correct. And the 73, Derek Jones under pressure now from Drake Kemper. And the lap time's going out so much that the timing and scoring thinks this car's missing. And the Mini's really struggling. In comes second place, Jack Rouse Jr. in the Coa Motorsport Mustang. Now, this is significant. Paul Holton is still out there. We've got several cars off the race. No, no, it, it, they're just going so slowly, Jeremy, that yeah, the timing right. thinks that they've gone missing in the, in the sectors because but it is so Jesse difficult. Lazare? Jesse Lazare's in, in, the in the pit lane in the 69 McLaren. The Ford is fuel and wet tyres. And yeah. in comes the Stevenson Chevy, and he's gone past. Totally missed his pit box, Jim Roller. Totally missed it, John. He uh, tried to apply the brakes, and there was nothing. He slid right through the pit box, knocked the lollipop uh, right up in the air. They're pushing the car back. Yeah, because be, they can't drive be it back, of course. And, uh, gonna be fuel and what Continentals, and one of the crew guys just slipped. So this, uh, the concrete pad that is the actual work area is very slippery at this point, so the guys on slicks need to be very careful. Thank you, Jim. Keep an eye on that. Yes, they, they couldn't, he couldn't drive the car backwards. It has to be pushed. If he'd driven it, it would have been instant disqualification. So... Till Bechtelsheimer is in, in Porsche number 33, Jesse Lazare in, in the 69 McLaren, Matt Bell would mention. Uh, 69 fuel and wet weather tyres, Cameron Castles in the body motion Porsche, the 12 car in, fuel and tyres as well. Shea Adam, what's going on at your end of pit lane? Well, I'm just seeing the first of our drivers who is thinking about getting ready to get in the car. That's number 99, Steve Phillips uh, qualified, and it will be Al Carter taking over. He's starting to think about putting on his gear, but also the 33, oh. when Darth came and came in, it missed it, pits box as well. The, oh, no. Can you believe this? The only car with all wheel drive has gone straight on at turn one. That's the 75 Audi RS3 sedan. And that was uh, David Askew car. off as well. That was Roy Block driving that. David Askew's gone off in the 63 Porsche. Ooh, and that the number 76 car does not come into the pit. Should have come in. Well, if there's a full course caution. F if there's a full course caution now, he's in real strife. Paul Holton's going to lose ground. The 63 Porsche in the wall. Oops, the hood up now on the, the 75. The hood up on the 75 car of Rob Block, and he's now in trouble. Now he's gonna, if he can get that oh, off shame. the size of the circuit. Pits are closed, pits are closed. Oh, Paul Holton. 
That is a disaster, unless, of course, well, he can get it through another 10 minutes, 15 minutes. No, it's more than that. It's 20 minutes. It's not going to be that long to clear this up, surely. I was just wondering if he could hang on out there and then come in when the pit's open to do his driver change. There's uh, 10 minutes to go before Paul will have done his time. Just then to recap, first of all, we had the 75 C360R Audi S3, the only car with all-wheel drive, into the wall at turn one, went, ran straight on, took off the rear bumper and dislodged the bonnet, which is now the hood over the, over the windscreen. And then the 63 DXDT Kensal Racing Team, Kensai Racing Team, Porsche Cayman, with David Askew, Aaron Provolado, Provolado not able to be get in, and the 65 car has hit the wall coming out of turn 11. Oh, no. That's no, the Marillo no, racing car. That's number 63 we're looking at. Is that the one you're... So... 65 off as 65 well. 65 as well, we believe, for Brett Morsing. Well, that's a shame, because Brett... Yeah, I could... Brent was doing a really good job there. Yeah, absolutely can, excellent run by I him. I can see that car's got going again. The 65 car's got going again. There's people coming into the pit lane with the pit lane closed. It's the 66 Mazda that's coming in. Now, is he pulling straight off the circuit? No, he's gone straight through. So the safety car is out on the track with an hour and 25 to go when the full course caution was called and this is a huge shake up where is paul holton on the circuit yeah is he on the circuit yeah i hope so well yeah <laughs> and there's uh, another marillo race there's the 65 off at turn one so uh, offered the last corner and the first standing water and slick tires even continental slick tires can't cope with that it just doesn't work there's no point in even attempting it there's too much for slick tyres now. Even the bravest of brave drivers, one of the best drivers I know for driving on slicks in the wet is Darren Turner, and even he would struggle in that. And even at slow speed, we're going to lose the four car. He's lost it going into turn number seven, and he was crawling. That's Hugh Plum in second position at the moment, and he couldn't get the car stopped going down the hill from six to seven. He's facing traffic now, and the standing water all the way around the circuit. Now he's got to get that car turned round. Just flying down the hill there, isn't it, the, the rain? Oh, and he's going to get hit by the McLaren 77. Matt Keegan does exactly the same thing. And at about four miles an hour, they've hit each other as Matt Keegan lost it, coming into the yellow flag zone. He might not be the last yet. There's a huge puddle of water where people are turning in for turn number seven, right at the bottom of the dip. The 77 and the four Second need to get out of that. Second cars, John. So Dylan Merkert's gone through and take second place. The track's blocked now because we've got a McLaren right across the circuit. Who's next up? It's one of the Mazdas coming through. I really feel for Hugh Plum. He wasn't really doing well, anything wrong. Yeah, he's going pretty quickly though, isn't he? He won't feel he it did, to him, he Jeremy. He'll feel like he's crawling. He tried so hard to keep that car on the asphalt. Really good. And there was uh, no damage at no. that point that he spun it. Matt Keegan arrives. Jeff Mosing just snuck through there. Yeah, leader in ST, Mosing Gallant. Derek Jones has stayed in third position. And here comes Matt Keegan, just comes along, loops the car 180 degrees and bumps into him at the rear of the McLaren to the front of the Porsche. Now, has he done damage to the Porsche? That's the question. 63 car is moving again. And so this might not be a quick full course yellow, a uh, uh, long full course yellow. What about the 75 car as the shower is blowing through and blowing through very quickly. Paul Holton may yet survive in the lead of the race. Got a 42 second lead back to Hugh Plum, but that course will disappear because Hugh has spun and Dylan Merkett will have gone through. It was nearly a full minute. I haven't seen the leader go through. No. I've no clue where the leader is on the circuit at the moment. The car just came through. Where is number 76 car? Mini number 73 comes through with a whole bunch of car. 76 has gone through. He just hasn't come through second one yet, Jeremy. That's the he's completed his 18th lap. He's still got a decent gap back to everybody else. The problem for those people who've pitted, made the right decision, is there's so many cars out there still on slicks that are tiptoeing around 
and of course they can't get by them. In comes the number four. No. Yes, Hugh Plum being set straight through because the pits are still closed. I think he was going to pull into the... I think he was going to retire the car. And I think he'd make the turn right. He was going to go in through the back way of the paddock and he was told he can't do that. Yeah, because that, that was a car that, they, they, that the Team TGM wasn't really intending to run through the race in any case uh, because uh, it's all about uh, Ted Giovannis. Only five minutes now until the 45 minutes is up. And that, in these conditions, is two laps. Two laps behind the safety car. If we can close everybody up, if we can close everybody up, because there's still people out there who are on slick racing tyres. And what I would suggest will happen is the 111 seconds through the first sector for Paul Holton last time around, he is really tiptoeing. There's a 65 car on pit lane as well. Seven goes through to complete his 18th lap. Yeah, 65 was involved in the a couple of incidents, hit the wall at uh, the final corner and then went straight on at turn one in a fairly short space of time. Hugh Plum has, as I suggested, gone straight back into the paddock down at the pit out end of the pit lane. So now we are just... Uh, by the end of this lap, Paul Holton might see the pit lane open. And if he does... Uh, he might be able to come in because we're only three and a half minutes away from him doing his time. The sunshine might be on the front straightaway again as well. So what tyres do you put on at that point? Because we know how quickly it... I don't think... I, I think there's too much standing water at the moment for slicks. I really do. Yeah. BMW coming through is the 84 car. That was a car that had problems earlier on and Tyler Cook is still circulating. Wets on the wall for the 76 McLaren, but no crew as yet. Well, what is normally a 20, 30 second first sector was 111 seconds for the leader and 156 in the second sector. Paul Holton is driving very, very slowly indeed. It's a red flag. We've got a red flag delayed, uh, displayed at start finish. Now, we're not seeing the reasoning for that. And I'm sure it's... Lightning. Could be lightning in the area. Bring the marshals in. Could be that. Uh, the only other thing that I can think, the 75 car, Rob Block, was stranded out on the track, but I don't see why the, that couldn't have been pulled away, unless they felt there was too much standing water around it, even at safety car speeds. So... Paul Holton was very slow through the first and second sectors, which tends to make me think there's something going on, on the far side of the circuit. Red flags are out, so everyone will come to the pit lane. Uh, and what this... Now, will they allow the 76... Uh, and I tell you, we haven't gone through, of course, the 45 minutes yet either. Quite. Almost, but not quite. I, I'm not sure how that's going to stand for driver time with the red flag being thrown. Will they recalculate it? Because the time at the moment is still ticking down. I made the mistake of watching the uh, scoring system because that's gone down. It's gone a bit haywire. Yeah. And not yet seen the leading... McLaren, well, it's been picked up by the Chevy safety car and is brought in along pit lane. It's a Corvette safety car. So the Corvette safety car was pacing the field and Paul Holton is in the pit lane. And there's many cars between him and Dylan Merkert in second place. It should be Matt Keegan in the 77 car in third, but we saw Matt having a spin and clipping the number four of Hugh Plum. It matters not how what the distance are. They will be parked in the fast lane of the 
pit lane. So red flag. Hmm, sort this one out. Well, it's not the worst thing that can happen to the 76 car because everyone's in the same boat now. You, you make the decision, you, those who've gone on to, whether they're on wets or slicks doesn't matter because when you come back out, there'll be at least a lap under yellow flag, by which time you could come in and do your stop and change your driver. Every, yeah, everyone's got to pit and change everybody's their drivers. Everybody's got to change their driver. So yeah. there's no advantage or therefore disadvantage. No, except for the fact uh, he's still on slicks and depending on how long we have this interruption, which we don't really know yet why, particularly with a huge amount of blue sky off to our left. Um, then uh, uh, the, the, the rain's about stopped. The rain's about stopped, yeah. which is good news for, for no, number 76, because he's got to keep it on the track now, uh, even under yellow, which isn't going to be that easy. How quickly do the pits open? Would he have to do one lap at speed, or can he come in at the end of the formation lap? Do the pits open? There's your question. A track safety truck down there in turn one. That's, ah, uh, I wonder if where the Audi went in, it has deranged the barriers. Yes, it has. That's exactly what they've been looking at down there. The covering, the light blue covering in front of the tyre wall has been all pulled away down at turn one. Tyre wall looks reasonably intact there, does it? Yes, through the binoculars. Um... It could be a bit of track work that needs doing there. And with the weather as it is, I'm not sure that I would want to risk it. Now, uh, I can hear on the PA an announcement being made, which I am presuming is to clear the grandstands because there's lightning in the area, and that will be why. That will be why the race has been stopped, because you've got to stand yeah. down the track marshals and the camera people. So the grandstands look to be clearing. Certainly the main grandstand next to us, I can see people moving down. Turn one grandstand, still through. And Rich White is off his camera, so that could only possibly mean um, that he's been told to do that, because Rich is normally super glued to his camera. Which is... Super bizarre because beautiful looking, weather behind us. Absolutely gorgeous. Nothing but blue sky to the north, to the west, which is where the weather is coming from. So this is going to be a pretty uh, brief stoppage, I believe. But, but, but the problem let's is, hope it's if there's if there's lightning within, I think it's eight miles, isn't it? Isn't well, there was a big clap of thunder uh, yeah. during the race, and the, the, the lightning probably is at within eight miles. Oh, easily. The good news is, it's going away from us. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, bizarre rules weather is, we've had rules today. Is rules. No, and, 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 and you, you and don't mess. You don't, don't mess with, with voltage. Rules. No, exactly. you don't mess with voltage, yeah. mate. Yeah. Um, that is, uh, and uh, we got struck by lightning coming into Toronto on the way in on the the flight on the way in, which was uh, an experience that whilst the air, the lightning strike goes straight through the aircraft, I still don't want to have to go through it again. Mm. Um, it was quite uh, interesting, shall we say? And this is exactly the right call from the officials. Pit lane officials evacuating the pit lane as well as uh, there is lightning in the area. So the front stretch grandstand is being evacuated. Uh, although I still see people at uh, turn 10 and turn 1 and on the SS grandstand. Uh, let's... let's uh, Sweat our pit lane assets here. It's as if they're not damp enough already. Drivers are still in their cars on the pit lane. Uh, Jim Roller is already on the pit lane as well. The rain is just about to stop, Jim. That's the good news. Jim Roller. And there you are. My, my switch got turned around, John. Sorry. Uh, down here with Jeff Mosing. Yes, the rain has almost stopped. It was cute. I walked up behind Jeff and he says, don't touch the car, thinking I was one of the crew guys. <laughs> so, uh, how are you feeling uh, 40 minutes in? I'm feeling fine. Uh, uh, none of the pain has, uh, has increased, so that's good. Um, you know, uh, we were, Eric and I were talking earlier and uh, one thing I have to say, I usually wouldn't have to compliment the Continental tires on is... Uh, they ride really nice. You know, I had a 
I didn't have too much trouble with my back uh, during that stint. Uh, just got out front and just tried to put my head down and be consistent. Uh, Ken, you know, I say this all too often. I sound like a broken record, but, you know, we've, we've been chasing a setup all weekend, and he absolutely nailed it. I mean, I honestly, it's not me the hero. It's the guys in the pits. They really nailed the setup. And, uh, you know, the slicks, the slick Continentals had nothing for the weather. It just got too bad. Yeah. I had a 25-mile-an-hour slide into the wall here at 12, uh, you know, just because of the conditions. Thankfully, the IMSA made the right call there to go red flag. Uh, because it was just getting too dangerous. All right, well, uh, hang in there. We should be getting started again pretty soon. Well, one guy who's really hoping that we get back to uh, green flag racing with no further delays, Nick Gallant. It's been one heck of a race start for you. You were flashing your headlights at me, or at least that's what I would like to think. Uh, maybe some electrical things going on with the car, with yeah. some kind of possibility there. Uh, electrical, yeah, I mean, that's probably going to happen for some teams out there. We're doing okay. We're just checking over battery voltage and making sure that nothing's wrong with the car. But uh, what an interesting uh, last half hour. It was pretty neat. It's pretty fun out there. When you get to a red flag condition because of weather, where your crew guys are still over the wall, there's lightning in the area, and you're out here on your own, you're in the middle of a race. How do you keep up that intense mentality? Yeah, it's the focus is something I've been working on, and you know I'm sure a lot of other drivers too. But um, yeah, you just got to remember that everybody else is out there dealing with the same thing, and, and to not overdo it. I mean, that's this the main thing is just you know, of course, go as fast as you can, but remember everybody else is going through exactly what you're going through too, and always keep reminding yourself of that. I'm thinking about the fans out there who just got soaked. Uh, these guys are uh, are troopers, man. So so hats off to you guys out there out in the S's and the top, uh, you know, turn seven. Spoken like a true champion. Uh, Jim, you're a little bit further up, and who did you find? I've caught up with Paul Holton. It was easy to catch up with him because he's sitting here in pit lane. Normally, I wouldn't be able to catch up with him because he's so fast. Um, that was pretty treacherous, wasn't it? You know, it, uh, it got real slick real quick there, um, just a couple laps. It was a little scary at first. Are you going to try and tough it out on these slicks now that the sun's shining again, or uh, is that what you're talking to the crew about? You know, it's, uh, it's awesome. I don't think, if I remember from looking at the radar before I got in the car, there's any more bands coming after that one. So with the sun out here, it's going to dry fast, but it's going to dry even faster once we get cars out there. So I, th I think the plan is we're going to stay on, stay on these tires, but we'll see. I'm probably going to get my doors blown off for the first couple laps until it dries up. Um, we'll see how it goes, I guess. All right. Well, good luck keeping on the black stuff. Thank you. Mm, it's a tough call uh, for all of the teams. Some people stopped for wet tyres, Jeremy, which was the right call at the time. Red flag here for lightning in the vicinity of Watkins Glen International, and that's the right call too. It was the right call to go for wet. Uh, the issue will be um, how long can they keep the wets under them and whether they decide to get their head down and drive and drive and drive and drive on the wets before they pass over to their second uh, second driver because by the time we've done got restarted we will have done the 45 minutes I, I, we'll muse on that for a moment let's go down to sarah catania and then till bechtelsheimer well when it rains it pours and that is never more true than for the number 44 crg i do borrow sarah catania you're kind of appreciating this bit of a red flag period because it gives you a break from dealing with the clutch issues what have you been going through in this car uh, yeah, it's never fun when you have, when your clutch decides to go out on you. Um, so, and this is actually the first time it's happened to where um, I've had to stay in. Normally, I just hand it over to Owen. But no, um, you know, it's it's never fun. It's not the race that we wanted to have, especially with how the first few laps went. Made it up to second and um, had a, an amazing car. And it's just a bummer to to have to deal with something like this. And it's not the situation where it's a slipping clutch. You've just been having to jam it into gear. Yes, exactly. There's nothing there. <laughs> That's just even worse. How do you continue to drive as hard as you do when you're dealing with such a tough situation? Oh, you know, my crew's been doing a good job uh, just trying to keep me calm, you know, talking me through it um, and all that. So it's nice to have them uh, have my back. Good luck the rest of the way through. Till Bechtelsheimer is with Jim Roller, well, in his number 33 Porsche.
Yeah, he's sitting here uh, staying nice and dry. Uh, Till, uh, been basic question. Uh, w well, you were lucky enough to get in here and get some uh, rain tires on. How slick was it? Yeah, it was, it was getting more and more slick, uh, you know, with each lap. So uh, I think the team made a great call bringing us in, um, putting rain tires on. On the reins, I mean, it was behind the safety car at that point. So uh, I think the, the full course yellow came on right as I came out of pit exit. Um, but it felt fine, felt fine on, um, on, uh, on rain tires. And um, it's just a shame that we got the red flag because, um, you know, I think uh, we would have been in a pretty good shape here with, uh, with the rain having stopped now and the, the track probably drying out. Uh, I think some of the guys who are still on slicks uh, may be in a good position, but hopefully not. <laughs> All right, well, good luck to you. Till Bechtel Scheimer uh, and before that, Sarah Catania. So, Jeremy, yeah, put, but put your team manager's hat on. Well, first of all, I'm going to say that both of the CJ Wilson racing cars came onto pit lane yeah. to change onto wet weather tyres. They're both on lap down now to the race leader. Uh, but uh, as Till suggests there, when we do get back underway here, as soon as we get back to green, if it's, if the, assuming the track is still wet, and with the sunshine beating down now and the warmth we've got, and a bit of a breeze as well, it's going to dry out very, very quickly. But that is certainly going to give an opportunity for the C.J. Wilson cars on their, on their wet tyres to get past and back onto the lead lap. Uh, we've got just under an hour and four minutes to go. The clock is still ticking. The clock has not been stopped. We've got another race to run this afternoon. So during the red flag period, the clock is ticking down. Now, I reckon... Well, I, I, no, I'm not going to say that. We need to find out what the ruling is on what happens with your drive time when you lose well, 20 it, minutes. It's not, it's not going to be a factor, a factor really now because uh, by the time they get back underway and get around one more time, the 45 minutes, even if you had stopped the clock, Fair point. the 45 minutes would have elapsed. So that's kind of a moot point, I believe, now. The lights have come on on the Corvette safety car and... I think I hear engines, Jim Roller. Yep, they've given everybody the command to fire them up. Right, okay, well, in the background, I hear it being adhered to. As through goes the all-wheel drive Cayman, uh, Cayenne rather, GTS. We've got fans coming back into the main grandstand here on the front straight. And it will be a moment or two, I think, before, only a moment or two, before cars are rolling. 65 Barilla Racing, Cayman still sitting on its hijacks in its pit box. The number four Hugh Plum car, by the way, has gone through the TGM car into their pits and is now shown as retired. So with an hour and two minutes, we are under full course caution. An hour and two minutes still to go. We're under full course caution question for me and maybe Shea could find this out for me is when does the pit lane open is it do we have to wait for the green flag or can you come in on the end of the green flag lap no I think you have to wait till the green comes out remember so that means those Long at the beach yeah so that means those at the back have got an advantage because as soon as the, the no I think you have to go through I think you have to take the green flag right because remember at Long Beach uh some of the GTD cars have that problem, including Paul Miller racing. Mm. Yeah. Well, we can't, unfortunately, we can't see, unusually, we can't see the pits close, one of the pits close markers. So we're on the wrong side of the track here. There's a little flashing light. That's a good, um, I'm not sure about this. We'll try and get a ruling on it as the Corvette safety car. Do you know what? You're not going to believe this, but running up from the S's to the inner loop, there's already a drying line yeah, there. Well, no, I can say because it, it, it's pretty warm. Uh, there's, a, there's, there's a good, there's a reasonable breeze, uh, and um, the sun is beating down. It's going to dry very, very quickly indeed. Uh, drive time will be recalculated. An announcement coming yeah, from race control, but. Frankly, once we get started, it won't make any difference because we were 90 seconds no. away. And the clock's still ticking, so they've, they've done their hour in any case. Uh, they've done 45 minutes in any case. Yeah, red flag doesn't count for your drive time. Yeah, good point. Um, there were 90 but, seconds but, short. But, but, but fine, but when we went out of the pits... 
the, the clock starts now, doesn't it, in terms of that? In, fa in, in fairness, the clock well, in case, it's restarted on a full course yellow, so they have now done their drive time. Indeed. So that's why it's important to know whether the pits will be open. Uh, let's go down to Jim Roller. Yeah, we're, we're endeavouring to uh, get an official word on that. The pits are still closed right now. The thought is that they will be allowed to pit before it turns green, but I'm not 100% sure on that, so nobody take that to the bank. OK, well, let's uh, wait to see. The sunshine has returned with just under an hour I'm of racing sure to go. The, the issue, of course, is if you open the pits as it goes green, unless the leader is way back, they lose the advantage of being the leader and coming in first. I'm pretty sure you have to take the green and then you can't come in until after that. Right, so the, the pits don't open until the last car's past the, the line. That's my understanding. We may not see a green flag, of course, at the end of this first full course yellow lap since the resumption after the red flag, because there may be a lot of people deciding whether they want to stay on wet or go back to dries or stay on dries or go to wet. I think he's stay on dries now, if I'm honest. Particularly if all you're going to do is do a couple of laps and then hand it over to your co-driver. Let him make the decision. The Where Jim Roller is at the moment. Jim, are you standing on dry concrete already? Almost, John. There's about a foot of dry concrete that didn't get a lot of rain, but in some places where it did, it's already starting to dry. Sun's beating down. It's gotten really warm. Yeah, <laughs> it's and, raining, and but it's gotten really warm. It's it's warm, therefore humid as well. There's still standing water on the start finish line. There's still one or two areas that are going to be tricky out on the circuit. Uh, tricky with a capital tricky. So Paul Holt comes round, and there's no sign of safety car coming in. Safety cars, are, uh, lights are still on, and there's no one lap to go from the starter stand. So, by my reckoning, whatever race control say about driver time, even accounting for the fact that you take off the red flag time, that lap behind the safety car under full course yellow out of the pits has put everybody who started over their 45 minutes. Yeah, I believe that's not going to be a factor. No, that's exactly what I'm saying. I th everyone is over their 45 minutes, whichever way you cut it now. So, pointless exercise doing the Duckworth Lewis method to recalculate how many minutes you need to be behind. We. I just wonder whether we might actually see the pit lane open behind the safety car and let everybody decide what they want and give everybody a chance. There will be a pass around to take lap cars out of it, yes. which is, I think, also and, pretty fair. And any cars that are trapped between, yeah, trapped between the safety car and the class leader and that is the case here for, for Liam the, Dwyer and uh, well, uh, there was there was no but the leader was the first car behind the safety car so it would only be trapped between the leader and the race leader and their the class, class leader, leader the yeah, ST exactly. so only the STs Indeed. and that's exactly what's happened so yeah. there's there's been a pass around as it's yeah. called so that's uh, Liam Dwyer in car number 26 correct and uh, Michael Johnson in car number 54 yeah. Does that mean Sarah Catania gets back on the lead lap? No, yeah, she doesn't. I think she's fallen uh, farther back. Pits that. are open for GS. Pits are open now for GS. I think this is really fair. I think this is really fair because there's a safety issue here. Let anybody who wants to come to the pit lane and change, change. If you want to roll the dice, that's fine. But let's not restart a race with people potentially on the wrong tyres. What it does also well, mean is that everybody has made that choice of their own volition, Jeremy, and true. hasn't had it forced upon them by circumstances. It also means that everybody should come in because this is where you change your driver. So basically, we've reset the race. It'll be Paul Holt, Dylan Merkett, Matt Keegan, 
uh, the first three into the pit lane. Everybody should come into the pit lane. Most likely, yeah, um, if they think they can cope on, on slick tyres, because there's not a whole heck of a lot of point in wet tyres, because you're going to be putting slicks back on in, some in, stage. in a couple of in a, in a couple or three laps, probably. Uh, so if you think soon, it's too, anyhow, it's going to be really treacherous. So if you think it's too wet, then you don't bring your man in for for the driver change. You leave him out on wet and say, go and take 30, 40, 50 seconds a minute. But you're still going to lose that when you pit again, aren't you? <laughs> no, it's a tricky one. It's not easy, this one. So it's not necessarily about whether you pit or don't pit to change drivers. It's what tyres you put back on the car. Yeah, because it's going to be it's going to be very treacherous. Leader's in. First few laps. Leader is in the lead. Yeah. And Dylan Merkin comes in now. Now, the, the 33. Three, they will stay out because they want to get back on the lead lap. Yeah, Tilbeck Dilsheimer in the, That's the 33. 33. Uh, and also the 35 and the 46 car. Correct. They've all gone around on their wet tyres to get their lap back to the leader. Now, the question will be, will there be another wave by at the end? The leader coming down to... The pit stall, Paul Holton with the C360 team and with Shea Adam. Paul is finally done with his drive time. He is getting out of the car and handing it over to Matt Plum, who is having a little bit of trouble getting himself installed behind the wheel, but now does so. There are slick tires going on to this car, so they are doing slick to slick. The sister car, the 77, has also come to a stop. Nico Ronde getting in there. Slick Continentals for the 77 as well, out of second place. 28 car is also in driver change. They are on slicks. They're going to stay on those very same slicks. Behind them comes the uh, number 12. Also, the 57 Camaro is in for Stevenson. That's going to be a driver change and a change to slicks. Trent Hinman's going to get into the 12. They're taking the wet tires off and putting slicks on for the 12. I've got the 59 Ford in its pit box. There was the running board on the right-hand side had actually come off the car, and a mechanic just sort of slotted it back into place like a puzzle piece. There are slick and sticker Continental tires going on this car, as well as a driver change. So that is what's happening down here. The number 99 has also come in, the Aston Martin. Driver change there as well, and no tires, just fuel. Now, I just saw the 76 car going out, and I think there was an issue with the left front of that car. I need to yeah, see it again. There often is with those uh, McLarens, because they have just that single wheel nut, uh, and it's not a, an easily threaded nut. You actually, actually physically have to put it on by hand, turn it a little bit to get it on the splines, and then tighten it up. It's very easy to cross-thread it, John. Somehow, Jesse Lazare is... He scored out. as the leader, because so did he, he stay out? out? I think so. Right. Well, that's very, very bad news, of course, for Till Bechtelsheimer and everybody, No, isn't it? because they were ahead of him. Ah, they were ahead of him. Case. Yeah, so they've got that lap back, but they won't climb ahead of him on the timing and scoring. Right. right. Okay, yeah, I think understood. So. so Jesse Lazare stays out in the 69 Motorsport in action. Aston Martin, that was a car that had issues further uh, earlier on in the race. Now, it will be ST's next time around into the pit lane. 77, Matt Keegan's car still in the pit lane. Is that the damage when he, he spun very slowly backwards into Hugh Plum, uh, Shea? Yeah, it was, and the uh, mechanics actually were working really hard to rip the rear bumper valance off of the car. The bit underneath that sort of works as the splitter, it has started to come off as well, so they were trying to rip whatever little bit they could off of there too. And one of the pods that sits on the bottom left-hand side and functions as exhaust has been bent the wrong way. But the team is not too concerned about that, at least. That's the sound of the car leaving. About to get busy, about to get busy again in the pit lane for our current tires pit lane team as Jeff Morsing brings the whole of the ST field in. It will be pretty much all of the ST field unless there's anyone who wants to get another lap back. Um, would just say that race control have just told us the drive time is now 37 minutes. So drive time now 37 minutes to get your points, Which so... Not a factor. Well, except for the fact that that is only 13 minutes from now to get your other driver in. That allows you to go to, th to 37 minutes to go if you want to make here while the sun is shining. Uh, Jim Roller. 30, uh, 73 Mini is in. Derek Jones is getting out. 
They're putting, uh, and Matt Pombo's getting in. They're going from slicks to slicks on that car, along with fuel. Also in is the 36, the 18, and the 17. Driver changes and changes to slicks in most cases. The leader is doing a driver and tire change down with fuel. The 44 CRG I do borrow car, Sarah Catania, has gotten out. Owen Trinkler said he's ready to handle a car that has no clutch. They are putting slick tires on both of those mentioned. The 27 MX-5 and the 25 MX-5, the two that did not stop before the caution came out, they have both come in. There are slick tires going on both cars. Correct, correction, John, on the number 17 Porsche. Uh, Spencer Pompelli got in the car. They did not change tires, however. They just fueled the car, sent Spencer out on the uh, Continentals that were on that car. Uh, that's a couple of teams that have gone with the used slicks that were already on the car. And that's very interesting, Shit. The 44, that's the sound of the Nissan engine roaring back into life. The team had to push the car down about three pit boxes because Owen could not get it restarted. And the 26 Mazda MX-5, the Freedom Autosport, the one with Liam Dwyer driving, they came in and took on wet tires before all the chaos began. They just came in. Andrew Carbonell has now been installed, and they have given him four new slick Continentals. Yeah, it is slicks now. The front straight, all bar dry. And I yeah. think this was a good, I, I've got to say, I, I, the purists will say, oh, why have you done this? Why didn't you restart the race? But I think on safety grounds, this is a good call from IMSA, good call from race control. Let everybody make the pit stop. It, I, I accept it puts everybody back on the same footing. It does mean we're going to have 48 or 47 set, uh, minutes to go. Um, remember, this was a race that was stopped because lightning was in the air. Um, not anything else, and you know I, I think this is a very sensible way to do it too. As I said before, Jeremy, allow the allow the teams to make the decisions of their own volition and not be forced to restart on tyres that perhaps weren't suitable. The question is, of course, will those guys who left the slicks on will they suffer in the closing stages of the race, having done what 35 minutes, nearly 40 minutes on a set of tyres? and then they're going to have to do the same. That's going to be about 80 minutes. The reason that I pointed out the drive time is was those people who've stayed out, told Bechtel, in fact, now they've come in. So the two Porsches of C.J. Wilson have come into the pit lane. Yeah, to put on wet, uh, slick tyres. To put on slick tyres. And presumably to change drivers as well. And... Come the 69 Just, car. Uh, well, behind the safety car. Uh, uh, Jeremy, I can let uh, Jim update you on that. Yeah, when the two uh, C.J. Wilson cars came in, the McLaren number 69 was right behind them. He got almost to the cone that is the demarcation for the entrance to the pits, and stopped, literally stopped, and then turned left and went back out on the racetrack. So. Uh, a late change of his mind. I don't know whether the crew uh, radioed and told him to stay out or what. So, okay, thank you, Jim. Yeah, but why is he not behind the safety car? Uh, he scored as the leader. Right. You are absolutely right. And he's half a lap ahead of the safety car. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Well, he's either got a, the safety car's got to speed up and catch him up. Which he couldn't uh, seem to be doing. Well, who have you got leading the race on your S 69? Are you sure? It's not 76. No, it should be 69 if he didn't come in the... Well, he's had pit two pit stops. The 69's had two pit stops. One was early. Yeah, and then the red flag. And then the red flag, yeah. So, um, I'm not quite sure how he's got himself ahead Team of the safety car. Did he somehow follow the other guy? Did he follow the CJ Wilson cars passed so, so they're trying to figure out what to do well he was the That's team weren't think the team weren't ready for him which is why they said don't come into the pit lane uh shit adam with matthew keegan uh, you just walked up to me and said do you know which box plum is on well what happened out there from your point of view well i guess in honor of uh, canada day it was like an ice rink out there so <laughs> you know going into turn seven i was a passenger and unfortunately i got into hugh and i apologize for that those guys they do a good program so, um, Hugh, I owe you a beer. Well, it's been a heck of a season for you and Nico Ronde. I mean, coming in with momentum, you feel like this rain, it's not going to affect you guys? No, you know, uh, I feel like as a team, we're strong in the wet. Uh, I feel like we've got the right car for it. 
And, uh, you know, I think it can play to our advantage. Well, good luck the rest of the season. Thank you so much. John, the 69 is coming down pit road. There was a little bit of confusion. Uh, the team wanted him to stay out and actually do the restart on the rain tires that he's on. But he made the decision, uh, and they weren't quite ready. He made the decision he wanted to change over to slicks. So that's the situation. They told him, well, okay, we'll do that, but we can't do it right now. So he went back around, did another lap. They're going through the driver change right now and changing over to four sticker slicks. Depends how quick they are uh, on doing this. But uh, if they can get that car rolling in the next 10 or 15 seconds, they get a lap on the front, they get a lap on the field, don't they? Yeah, I think so. He hasn't crossed the line as yet. Right. So he's already finished lap 22. Uh, and the field's coming through to turn number eight. No, I think he's just at the head of the field. He's just at the head of the field. So wherever he comes out is where he comes out. They need to get that driver in as quickly as possible. There's still all kinds of pass arounds. There's still all kinds of pass arounds and wave going on. So we're not going green this time around, but he is going to lose positions if he doesn't get rolling in a moment, Jim. They're having trouble with the window net. They can't get the window net re-seated. Uh, and uh, Jesse Lazar, very frustrated, uh, climbs over the wall. A couple of, took a couple of crew guys to actually horse on it to get it seated, and he's away. He might just get to the end of pit lane and get out, which if he does, he can get his foot down, and he'll get a lap on the field. He will, but to get there, I think he, I can't see how he could have got there without getting past the safety car earlier on. He didn't come in when everybody else came in. He said that? Yes. Um, let's just bear with me for a second. Let's see if that car goes out of the pit lane. It does. So the McLaren number 69 is out onto the track. And, oh, we have gone green. Now, I didn't expect that. There was all kinds of shuffling going on and cars out of position. So we've gone green. And that means that those guys have gone through. Now, the 69 has Chris Green at the wheel and needs to get a real wiggle off because he's already halfway around the lap that the rest of the field have come through to start. Uh, stay with us on this for a moment. We'll go back down to Jim Roller in a second for an interview, but let's just get this restart underway. The track, by the way, not bone dry, but pretty dry. And there's no doubt that it is slick weather. It's Tim Probert leads ST now. No, he doesn't. Oh, on the 65 car, Sean, as the leader. He's taken over from Brent Morsi from the Marillo Racing car. The 65 is scored as the leader on the screen in front of me. Now, that, that it can't be right, because he spun well, a couple of times. The number 54 car is showing. Now, the 54 car got the wave around. But let's see how it could have gone all the way through to the lead of the race as well. 44 okay, car back, trying to make up positions uh, with now Owen Trinkler at the wheel, and he's managing that clutch problem, trying to make up positions, sitting down in 30th position. Great action in the ST field, right in the middle of the field. The 26 master is right in there. Um, I don't think the timing is correct here. And we'll have to get this confirmed but certainly doesn't tie up with what Jeremy's got. 54 BMW, 34 Mazda, Simchak and Mike Johnson fighting for what is listed here as seventh and eighth position. Still waiting for Chris Green to come around and see what happens as he goes through. Right, Chris Green goes round. He's just completed lap number 24 by my reckoning. Right, And Mine too. coming through behind him is Matt Plum. And the gap between first and second is 7.6 seconds. Robin Liddell third. This is on the timing screen in the Chevy Camaro. And then Trent Hinman in the 12 body motion Porsche. Then Al Carter in the 99 Aston Martin. In ST, it could be anybody as they all went across the field, the line so close together. But the I think it's Spencer Pompelli. I, I, I don't Well, Tim believe... Probert's got a lap on the rest of the ST yeah, field. and I don't see how. So I think that's a glitch. Let's go down to Jim Roller. 
there's a, uh, a <laughs> the guys down here in the 69 car are still trying to figure it out. Uh, Jesse, do you know, are you in the lead? I hope so. I think we are. <laughs> Just stay there. Did you ever take the computer? Did, yeah. Did you? You didn't pass the safety car, did you? Absolutely not. No, we, I don't know exactly what happened. I thought I could come in, then we can't come in, then there's a red flag. There's a lot of, a lot of factors going on out there. Hopefully we made the right calls. Chris is in the car now with a new set of tires. I think we can make it to the end, and I think we could go for the win. So you never came in for wet? No, you had wet, so you came in for wets. And then right here, most recently, you made the decision. You were coming in, then you stayed out one more lap. What was going on with that? I didn't know if I was allowed to come. I didn't want to rely on the cars in front of me to go in. Fortunately, I missed radio communications, but we still came in, and hopefully we made the right call. And I, I, Chris is a great driver. He loves his track, so I think he could bring it home. All right, well, these guys think they're in the lead, John. I think they are, too. Jeremy has them scored in the lead on his lap chart, and I go with Jeremy's lap, lap chart then. 7.8 seconds. Uh, mini, mini BMW scrapping it out, and that's a great scrap in the ST field. Uh, Tim Probert has come into the pit lane in the 65 car, so that may well sort this out. That 65 car was on the jack stands for a long time before we went back to green, so I've no clue how that car managed to get scored in the lead. He's going to the penalty box, uh, and I'm being told that was for working on the car with the pits closed. So that will sort that, ah, oh, Owen Trinkler and the 44 car off at the side of the road towards the end of the lap. It looks like between 10 and 11, hasn't made it back into the pit lane. So Spencer Pumpelli should come around, Jeremy, next time to be scored as the leader correctly in ST with Eric Foss second in the 56 car, with the Mini in third, the 73 car, and they're very close together. And that is exactly what's happened. Then Stephen McAleer for Mazda number 25 in fourth. Alexis Strauss in the 18 Porsche is next up, and Christian Simchak. Yeah, Aurora Strauss. Aurora uh, Strauss, she, sorry. she must have handed over to Colin Bloom, though. Right, OK, because she started the race. Correct. OK. 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 Not helping. OK. A so stop, a stop I, I see, said, said, yes, quite. Uh, so anyhow, Spencer Pompelli, I think, is, is, is leading from Eric Foss. Have we heard that woman before? Uh, no, that's are just those, Have those two ever battled before? Oh, yeah, Circuit America's last oh, yeah, time yeah, out. Yeah. Sorry, I see you mean. Full course yellow. Full course yellow. This will be for the Nissan. Well, we get a chance to sort all this out then. The Nissan is off at the side of the circuit, and it looks dead stick to me, and that clutch problem has come back to haunt the guys. And... That is uh, over the top of the Cadillac Racing area, which I think he just hasn't managed to get round towards pit lane. Unusual shot of that car. Uh, he's well off the racing surface. Oh, yes, he is exactly where I thought he was, between uh, 10 and 11, so I was right the first time. Oh, and straight into the pit lane again, the 60... Six, Six Master, an occasional runner in this championship, will be out at Lime Rock Park as well for the Riley Master team. So Spencer Pumpelli from Eric Foss, 1756-73-25, Stephen McAleer. Uh, in fourth place. Chris Green still leading, but his 5.7 second lead to Matt Plum will disappear. And Robin Liddell gets closed up to the leader in a Chevy Camaro that is very, very quick indeed. And the guy for whom this is particularly good news, certainly, is Guy Cosmo in car, car number 46, because uh, their, uh, their pit stop, they're not coming in with... Well, they, they'd uh, gone a lap down after making their pit stop. They stayed out a lap longer than the C.J. Wilson cars uh, before making their pit stop and uh, therefore were able to, when they rejoined the race, the, uh, the race is underway, they just come in the pits. So they were a long, long way back off the back of the pack. This is now going to enable Guy Cosmo at least to, to hold on to the tail end 
of the pack. We're going to have yeah, to and, and Mark Miller, Miller as cars. well. Yeah, and Demo. Mark Miller and Demo. You know, they, they were they were because but he's Dem between, he's between the two uh, he's between the two C.J. Wilson cars, isn't he, Guy Cosmo? So they should all get to close up. And we should get rid of some of the cars in between as well. 35 car going very, very slowly. The, this is the Porsche blue and Did we lose that silver car? car. And that was Damien Faulkner. And Damien is just ahead of Spencer Pumpelli. Is Damien still a lap off the left? Well, yeah, and that, that's... Um, I, I, I just look at the last lap. I didn't see him come past on the previous lap, so... He's kind of rejoined where he kind of would have been. He's right ahead of Spencer Pumpelli, which is correct as per the timing, 12th and 13th. And they're both now. So I reckon Damien is the first maybe, car maybe, off the lead lap. Yeah, maybe they lost the they lost the lap then. So, so I, think, the, I think the number 33 car was able to get out without losing a lap. Right, a couple of questions coming Must in. A was it a long stop then for the number 35? A couple of questions coming in, and Shea will be able to answer this because she was down at that end. Uh, the 76 car came in in the lead when we did those pit stops, but lost the lead. Was there a problem with their pit stop, Shea? Nope, their pit stop was exactly according to plan. Right, so how did he... Oh, so the 69 car, which stayed out and got around and passed everybody while they were still in the pits. Bingo. Yeah, and then because they were held behind the safety car, because they were picked up as the leader, Chris... Green's teammate managed to get in and change his tyres and get back out again uh, without losing that advantage he'd gained. Yeah, but yeah. when they went out again after the red flag, the number 69 car was behind all of the cars that then came onto pit lane. So it then should have cycled through the front, but I don't understand why then it wasn't behind the safety car. The 69? The 69 because he's out on his own, and I can't imagine why. Because number... So, well, it, it depends. The 76 was at the head of the line, wasn't it? When Correct. When they came down it onto the pit lane. Right, so the 69 so where should was have been, the 69 at, should that have been point? at the back of that line. Right. And then when the, other, when the other cars came into the pits, it would have moved to the front of that pack, which still should have been behind the safety car. And it wasn't behind the safety car. It was well right. ahead of the safety car. Yep. <laughs> so, you got me there. Unless the safety car picked up the leader coming out of the pits as the 76. 69 did do tyres. Well, no, because we when we went after, after the red flag, they were, they were, everybody was behind the safety car, weren't they? And behind Led the 76 car. Led by the 76 car. car. Yes, 76 car was the first car in line. So that's Dream why that. I'm confused. Rewind the tape. We'll work this out on Monday. And if Jeremy's confused, trust me, that's very confusing. <laughs> I haven't got a hope if Jeremy's confused. <laughs> the Nissan, by the way, is out of the way. We're down to the last 30 minutes of what should have been an action-packed 120 minutes. It's been a confusing 90 minutes so far, or 88 minutes. The safety car lights are out. Well, are, are there any lights on the safety car? Well, there are in the front. Because they were the ones that I saw going before, which made me say that we're not going to green this time, and there's none on the back either. No. So there's no lights on the safety car at the moment, so we should be going green at the end of this lap. The last time I looked at it, it had strobe lights flashing on the front. That's right. why I said, I don't think we're going green this time, because it was coming out in turn nine. And by the time we got to the start-finish light, we went green. We went green. And interestingly, of course, that was when the 69 car was still in the pit lane. Answers on a postcard, please, to yes. Imza Conundrums. So it will be Chris Green who leads the field back to the green flag with just around about 30 minutes to go, half an hour to go. Robin Liddell sniffs the top step of the podium. He's two cars further back. There's nothing between the top four, five, six cars all in line. 77 is Nico Rondé. And then behind him is the 59. That's De Martin, yes. 
than yeah. to the match of a sort. That is the GS field. Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't count any out, count out anybody at this stage. Anything Sean. could happen in yes. the next oh, half yes. hour, oh, as yes. they used to see at the start of Stingray. Oh, yes. And it will be green flag this time around. 65 has had a penalty for entering a closed bit, and then yeah. 65 and 69 in proper final wave by. There you go. So penalty to come then for the 69, we believe. Yeah. That makes sense to me, I'm, yeah. afraid. I'm afraid for those guys, which is a shame, but I could, I could see no other explanation. Well done, Jeremy. So the 69 will have to pit a bit unlucky for them that it happens after the safety car when everybody's closed up so much. So I think it was a question of uh, what was kind of too good to be true was. Yeah, agreed. Anywho. So through goes the leaders onto the back straight again. And once again, the minis are up the pace very, very quickly coming through the 33 of Mark Miller through that ST battle, trying to make up positions. He's five seconds behind Cameron Lawrence for ninth position. Damien Faulkner, the first car off the lead lap in the other CJ Wilson car, the 35. Side-by-side -side action for RS1 and the 56 Mosey Motorcars machine with... Uh, we've got both M Pombos in the car at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So the Pombo brothers, and they are, are both in the minis. One's in the 73 and one's in the 52. At least both plums aren't in at the same time as well. That would have been just too much for me. It's Matt Pombo in the 73 and Mark in the 52. And they are third and fourth at the moment. Heck of a battle going on at the head of that ST field between Pumpelli, Foss, Pombo, Pombo, and Connor Bloom's not the too far back either. Neither, in fact, is James Vance in the 37 mini, or Stephen McAlee, or Christian Simchak, or Andrew Carbonell. Or Gregory Lee Fugger, or Brick Casey Jr., or Derek Jones. That's 11 Devin seconds Jones. that we've gone through there for, you know, 15 cars. Now, the 69 car has not come in this time around. Chris Green will go across and be scored again as the leader. Let me see what they've got on the start-finish line. Is there anything there? Uh, not seeing any flag being shown in the 69 car. Very good. So, it's Off. a blue flag that's out there, and that's all. So, OK. Where's, uh, where's Spencer Pompelli? Pompelli has dropped out to third position behind and the, mini, and the mini that's gone through, yeah. So he's lost that position. Lost two positions. He was the leader, wasn't he? Yeah. So by the time he came across the line, he lost two positions. Voss in the 56 car. 56 car back to the lead. The other significant uh, place change on that lap was for... No! Robin Liddell lost third. Yes, to, to that uh, Aston uh, uh, Martin, which we're going to say. The Aston Martin just powered past Trent Hinman at uh, coming out of the turn 11, I think it was. Al Carter is now at the wheel of that automatic racing Aston Martin Vantage V8. Talking to David Russell yesterday, he said, we've got a pretty good car here. He was pretty optimistic. Yeah, Al Carter not quite as brave on the brakes as Robin Liddell and got a little love tap going into the inner loop from Robin, who was trying to take a little more speed through the centre section. 12 car Trent Hinman in behind. So 69 McLaren, 76 McLaren, 99 Aston. Front engine cars, first, second, and third. Then fourth position, also a front engine car, the 57 Camaro. First of the mid engine cars, Trent Hinman, the number 12 Porsche McLaren. from Nico Ronde. And the McLaren, number 77. Where's the engine the McLaren, John? In the middle. Right. Oh, yes, sorry, I put that in the front there, didn't yep. I? Yes, my apologies. So, sorry, when he's going back. English sports car. <laughs> the, but that Aston is absolutely flying, and uh, great first hit by Steve Phillips. Uh, Rob Eklund Jr., who should have been driving that car this weekend, we missed you, Rob, and uh, he had some late family uh, commitments he had to attend to. We hope everything is Leader all well. Leader into the pit lane back. Yes. to answer Oops. the penalty. And that will leave, then, Matt Plum leading the C360R, so this is a penalty for the 69 car, improper wave around. He may get a lengthy stop in the penalty box, we'll see, as he goes down past us now. Yep, he's been waved into the penalty box by the pit lane exit marshal. The arm is out. 
The Mazda 66 is going behind the wall as, I'm afraid, a breach of protocol. Now, the teams and have to decide for themselves if they're getting the wave around. He may just have followed the two C.J. Wilson cars. Did. Yeah, we took, we, 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 I mentioned that, didn't I? And I think, and also, we, by the way, we've got the third different leader in as many laps in ST because on that lap, uh, 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 Matt Pombo was able to sneak past Eric Foss. Matt po Mark Pombo, also number 52 car, started by Jared uh, Zelinski, has also got past uh, Spencer Pompelli too. And the other mini, of uh, James Vanson, right, is right, uh, not too far behind them so top, in the fifth position. Top four in ST then, mini Porsche, mini Porsche. Mm -hmm. The minis, the minis look huge, and they are so jacked up at the back as well. They are sort of leaning forward right on the front tires. And that's to just let the back end of the car slide. As Martin Haven has often said about touring cars, the rear wheels are only there to keep the exhaust from trailing the ground. Might as well just have casters on the back. Barely do any work, and the inside rear wheel of the Mini is off the ground more time than it's on round here. Every time they turn in, it's dangling in the air. Well, great run by the 73 team to the head of the field, and going for second is Mark. Mark down the inside in the 52 with the stars and stripes on the roof. So Minis first and second in the dry. Interesting, the Minis were struggling in the wet, really struggling in the wet, but good in the dry. So 73, JCW Mini from 56, uh, from, check that, 52 Mini JCW. Jared Selensky started that car, Mark Pombo now in second. Derek Jones did a cracking job driving up through the field in the early part of the race before the red flag, which robbed us of something in the region of 40 minutes. A little bit more, actually. 23 and a half minutes to go at Watkins Glen. Chris Green, by the way, still in the pit lane in the 69 McLaren. Said it was going to be a long stop. The point I was about to make was the teams have to make the decision. There's no list of cars that are read out for the wave by. It is cars eligible for wave by. Go now, right hand side or left hand side. Cars go now. If you get that wrong, it's a very, very long stop and hold. Yeah, I, this is not finished anytime soon. The pit lane. Penalty box marshal is reading a chapter or two of War and Peace. Not even looking at his stopwatch down there at the moment. Yeah, it's a uh, basically it's at least a lap penalty or the equivalent thereof. Or was it? It's, it's at least it's punitive. Penalty, not let's two. put it that way. Yeah. And uh, Chris Craig will be absolutely spitting. So the battle for the honours in ST. Two minis, 73 and 52. From Eric Foss leading the Porsche challenge from Spencer Pumpelli, 56 and 17. They are pretty close in behind the minis. They had a bit of a gap back to James Vance in the 37 mini. And then Connor Bloom Porsche, Andrew Corbinella, the 26 master. The leaders go across the line. Al Carter right in behind the leader. Robin Liddell still has the windscreen wipers going on the... Chevy Camaro, the 57, as it turns in. Nice move down the inside. That's Trent Hinman defending from Dean Martin in the 59 Ford. Yeah. Current ask Chevrolet, Porsche Ford. Brilliant. Great. In the top five. Top six is the first repeat. That's the 77 of Nico Rondi. It's not that far back. Only about two yeah. seconds off the back of that leading quintet. Yeah, and he lost most, much of that on, this, on that last lap, actually. Yeah, going through traffic. Again, Trent Hinman has to defend. He takes a huge amount of curve going into the inner loop. Dean Martin, a little more circumspect. It's a much bigger car. Fourth position in ST, being disputed through the Audi loop and over the top of the rise down towards turn number six. Completely dry now with dark clouds, though, threatening again overhead. Watkins Glen, live from trackside. Into radio and TV together. Jeremy Shaw and me, John Hindle, in our broadcast centre. And then the Tad Pit Lane reporting team this weekend, Shea Adam and Jim Ruler. 21 minutes to go. There's 21 minutes to go. 
Out corner, hanging the back end of the open back of racing Aston Martin out as he comes down into turn number eight. And again, side by side with Dean Martin and Trent Henman battling for fourth position. Martin was trying to go the long way around, coming out of turn number eight as they come onto the short shoot between nine and ten. Did he get it done? Let's see as they come onto the front straight. Uh, yes, he did. Yes, he did. Hinman's gone down to fifth, and Dean Martin goes up into fourth position. So McLaren Aston, Chevrolet, Ford, Porsche now the top five. That was a very, very aggressive move by Dean Martin, who's got a great car under him at the moment. Round the outside at turn eight and hung it out, toughed it out on the exit, right on the exit kerbs. Position made there by Guy Cosmo, uh, gets past Mark Miller on that last lap for the eighth position, number 46 ahead of the number 33. Only 15 seconds spreading the, is the spread between the top nine cars. All on the lead lap. And the fastest laps uh, of their particular races by both of the race leaders on that time around. The 76 and 99 both sitting in their best laps of the race. And now Dean Martin has caught Robin Liddell at turn six. And the battle of the front engine American cars. Martin goes to the outside again. He likes this outside move, but this time it's at turn number seven. That was a little optimistic, but he cuts back to the inside on the exit. It's got a great run. He's already nosed ahead of Robin Liddell. Wow, that 59 Ford is quick. It's Lord super quick. Corner, isn't it? He's got grip to give away in the turn number eight. He's already pulled out two or three cars lengths. Turns in way later than Robin can in the Camaro. Uh, 59 car to win. Oops. Oops. And off goes Robin Liddell. Did he get a little helping bumper there? I don't think so. He just seemed to... Uh... Run oh. wide to win the corner. He's, he's lost, lost drive. Or, yeah, I think he's so, lost drive. Like that. Yeah. That would explain perhaps also why the Ford got such a huge leap mm. off the toe of the boot. Well, that's everybody behind going up a position. And oh dear, problems also for the 35 Porsche in ST. Which was a lap off the pace in any case. Right. So it must have had a long pit stop then because they both came in together. Must have lost a lot of, a lot of time there during that pit stop and it fell off a lap off yeah, the pace. That's Damien Faulkner in the CJ racing car and Robin Liddell has Very his day come to win. I wonder if that's an overheating gearbox again, Jeremy. Yeah, good point. Uh, yeah, I said ST there, I meant GS, the 35 uh, GS Porsche. That's uh, Damien Faulkner in that car. They had fallen off the pace now. Well, with 17 and a half minutes to go, can Robin either get that car out of the way and into the dead. pit lane, or is it deemed to be far enough off the racing line to be safe? Full course yellow, it's not. Yeah, with those two cars both uh, apparently stranded. Well, I think Damo's car, Faulkner's car, is the bigger issue, if I'm honest. Yeah, But exactly. no, it's not the 1970s anymore. If you look at old Formula One videos, you'll see cars, stricken cars around the edge of the track. In the closing stage of the race, it's just not uh, done nowadays. Ah, uh, yeah, he lost drive and poor Trent Hinman had nowhere to go. Engine or gearbox, take your pick there. Yep. But there's no drive on that 57 machine. A bit of smoke coming from the front end would tend to suggest engine, but never know. The ZL1, ZL1. And, uh, and as you were alluding to, the, that car has had a bit of an Achilles heel. So it's only, this is only its second race weekend for this particular car for Stevenson Motorsports. And they've had uh, gearbox overheating issues all the way along. They thought they had a test day. They thought they'd cured it, but they came here uh, on uh, for the first day, uh, day before yesterday, I guess it was, and the problem had reared its head again. So perhaps it's that, but it's certainly something is too hot in there. So is Robin. Hey, Robin this, Robin's temper right now, and he said, so, "Just give me a talk. Just give me a talk." He says from underneath the RI helmet with the very well-known blue and white colour scheme. 
So Matt Plum from Alcantara from Dean Martin. And Dean yes. Martin will be loving this. Yes, he's got a fast car. He's got car. a fast car. Mind you, they're all fast cars, aren't they? This is going to be a heck of a shootout. Well, Nico Ronde is still in yeah. with a chance yeah. here in fifth position in the, in the 77 car. And remember, that car spun around and they hit the four car. And we thought that might be out of the out of contention. Yeah, that's the car that finished second last time out. So we make to its teammate, the car that's leading right now, car number 76. That was gearbox. That was gearbox from the vibrations on the onboard. Awful, but it's either gearbox or rear diff, rather than the front diff that this one doesn't have, of course. I think he's just trying to get it into another gear and trying to limp back to the pits, but there's nothing. And Robin can't do anything to get that car home, and that's why it's come to a halt, but a massive shudder coming out from turn eight and up towards turn nine. Stevenson pit wall, Mike Johnson there. Not a happy man, having seen that car come to a crashing halt. No bodywork damage, though. Robin will be not happy at all because he would have fancied his chances here. Uh, massive rattle from the car with lots of vibrations on the onboard camera. So drive line of some f shape or form. Nothing in terms of fluid coming out of that car, so that's good news. Certainly been an encouraging run though for that team. Uh, no doubt, I think it's Running a great there. looking car. It I really do, and the color scheme really suits it. Um, I like the fact that it still looks relatively stock from the outside, just the addition of that GT4 rear wing. And that decision to come in and make a pit stop if, when the rain came down certainly uh, didn't cost them at all. No. Um, in fact, they've uh, gained out of it. Now, is it very, the second pit stop uh, was a very, very quick one because they didn't need much fuel. They'd already taken on the fuel when they took on the tyres. So a great strategy once again, as ever. From Stevenson, no sports. Michael Johnson uh, calling the strategies. That uh, car was running very, very well there. Riding contention in third position all the way since that previous restart. Yeah. Matt Plum, Al Carter, Dean Martin. So McLaren, Aston Ford, then Trent Hinman of Porsche. Now he'll be wanting to get a good start. Try and get ahead of some of those bigger engine cars. Nico Ronde in the McLaren. Don't count him out. Cameron Lawrence, 21 Porsche. What's he got? Guy Cosmo now, only four seconds away yeah, from the leader. Quite. Under safety cars. I mean, he is literally just six cars away from the lead. And so you put a bit of money on that. Mark Miller, well, he's got a bit of a wiggle on in yeah, the he's, later he's, stages. He's not, no, he hasn't. He's been struggling a bit uh, since the restart. He's uh, been slipping back and okay. uh, was past, overtaken by Guy Cosmo and fell back a little bit as well. Who's got the right. tyres now, Jeremy? Remember, some of these cars haven't... Some of the guys that stayed on slicks didn't change from the start of the race. The 59 Ford has got a new set of slicks on after the red flag. Across the line, 12 minutes and 8 seconds to go. Hard on the brakes, Matt Plum gets the front end of that McLaren, diving towards the tarmac. Alcart a second in the 99, the blue. Aston Martin. Vantage then, climbing the hill. But a great restart from Matt Plum. Yeah. Your money's got to be on Matt Plum. I mean, he knows how to win races, doesn't he? He's already got 23 well. of them. Yeah, he's got the track position. He's won 23 races more than anybody oh, else. He's Trent Hinman getting in the not insubstantial hole made in the air by the Ford Mustang ahead of him. And a little bit further back, Guy Cosmo was trying to get past Cameron Lawrence as well. Don't think he quite did it. No, he didn't. Oh, 76 cars got a problem. The leader, Matt Plum, has gone off. And I was going to say, it looked like he missed a gear, but it's not 1983, hind off. But that's exactly what it looked like. Just, well, did. just coming out of the inner loop. Correct. Correct. Just didn't accelerate, did it? And he's dropped way back, way back behind Nico Ronde. So Al Carter leads for Aston Martin. He's dropped further back than that, in fact, because he's just ahead of Mark Miller. And the 27 car loses it. That's Brick Casey, Casey Jr. Jr. Not the first time he's gone round this weekend. No, he's had uh, 
uh, ABS problems with that mm. car. The team has all weekend long. That was turn six, but no, he's got where, a good again. That's where he went off again on, uh, on, oh, on we'll Thursday, get it back. too. Is there a gap there? Yes, there is. Come good on, Britt, get Brit. it in there. Well done. Let's find reverse. He was uh, up behind the number 81 Bimmer World BMW. Yeah, oh, locks up the back. Back end just locked yeah. up. ABS problem again. That's an almost identical accident, wow. although harder than the one on Thursday. Horrible. I, I saw on, what he showed me an onboard of that on Thursday after that first incident, and uh, the ABS locked up going to exactly the same place. He went off and he hit this. He did, hit harder this time, but the wing mirror on the right hand side flew through the open window, mm -hmm. hit him on the head on the helmet. Thankfully, the advisor was down, and then crashed into the screen and broke the windscreen. Yes. That was on downshift, rear lock up. Uh, with brake issues, it was like pulling on the emergency the brake. Leader, the now the Aston Martin's in the lead, isn't it? Yep, Aston leading. We've not had an Aston victory that I can remember. Not for a long time. It's been a while. I'm going to have to look it up. Aren't I? Yes, you are. Right. Almost had one at Road America last year, yeah. but then they ran out of fuel. Should have had one at VIR too the year before, and they uh, had a similar, similar thing. Yellow and red. Back in the Multimatic days, probably. Yeah. Yellow and red flag out, not for uh, slippery surface, but for debris on the track. Means the same thing, uh, something that sh is on the track that shouldn't be. That's at turn six. It's right on the racing line as well. Uh, little bits of bodywork and perhaps more. Nine minutes left, just off the racing line, thank goodness. Here's Dean Martin having a look at the leader, down in towards 10. Last win was VIR in 2014. Wow, that would have been... That's a long time ago. Yeah. That would have been uh, Chris Wilson and Matt Riddle. Here comes the pass for the lead, is it? 99, Al Carter right down the middle of the road into turn seven into turn eight excuse me yeah the great pressure now though from dean martin in that ford mustang great battle in st with the two minis still 73 from 52 the pombo brothers matt from mark then eric boss and spencer from pompelia less than a second behind james vance in the third mini closing up on them yep so that's a great battle that, as well uh, Oh, nice move down the inside by Trent Hinman. He's having to defend, but he's not got the pace. Ningo Ronde is trying to go around the outside, coming out the final corner. Now it's the drag race across the line, and Ronde goes through, and also going through the 69 car, unlapping itself. Yeah, it's two laps down the number 69 car to the overall leaders, but still 76 in the, in the Matt thick Plum of it. is back up and running again, and is now in sixth position, got back ahead of Cameron Lawrence. Guy Cosmo up to fifth for a moment, but I think he's just been passed as well by Matt Plum. Yes, he has. Matt Plum back up in the fifth then. And he's right behind Trent Hinburn. Wow, what a race this is at the front of the field. Seven and a half minutes to go, Jeremy. Don't write your final lap chart yet. No, indeed. I can't drive the great race. Sure, he's got quite the pace of Dean Martin, but Dean can't find a way around in the 59 Ford. Got to go back a few years. Shea Adam, Al Carter's last win here. That would be 2015. He was driving with Mark Goosens and uh, one of his Cameron Morris, who's in a car a few back from him right now. But, uh, that was his win on his way to the TP NAEC victory that year. Yeah, yeah the North American Endurance Championship uh, in the uh, Intervertex Sports Car Championship in Connor uh, Tyre. Yeah, his best finish has been uh, third place on four occasions. So in this series, Connor Tyre Sports Car Challenge, Al does not have a win to his credit. Dearly loved one right here, and so with that entire team. Rob Eckley Jr. not part of it uh, this weekend. He's not with us, but uh, tell you what, he'll be cheering on from home. Well, he's sitting on watching these pictures in glorious sunshine now. Hard to believe that this race was stopped for lightning in the air. Something uh, around about an hour ago. Across the line. Uh, I'm going to say three laps from here, possibly four, depending on the pace of the leader. 158.9 last time for Nico Ronde up in the third position. He's trying to close down the guys ahead of him, but 158.6 is the first and second. Dean yeah. Martin 
and Al Carter absolutely on them, virtually the same time, 6.11 to a 6.69. Oh, off the 17 car, can you believe it? Spencer Pumpelli's made a mistake, or has he got an issue? The car is down on the left-hand side, he's just coming out of turn number nine, on driver's right, just about where the Stevenson Camaro stopped, and I don't think he's going to get it much further than that. That could be all she wrote here, Jeremy. Yeah. He's not in a place of safety. Oh, what cruel look. That puts the Mini number 37 up into fourth, and the two Masters, the 34 for Simchak and Andrew Carbonell in the 26, up a position as well. Defending series champions and series leaders at the moment, coming to 17, Spencer Rappelli and Nick Galante did a fabulous job to get his first ever pole position and lead some of the early stages. Nico Rondé will be hoping this does not go full course yellow because he's got a real wiggle on, so is Trent Hinman, he's found some pace. Fastest centre, centre sector of anybody last time around, Trent Hinman, Guy. Cosmo making up time as well. Fuel pressure alarm on the 17, says Jim Roller. Well, he's been dogged by fuel issues, hasn't he? Had a nailed on victory at Road America disappeared when he ran out of fuel. Not short with, fifth, with uh, five minutes to go, and I'm surprised, particularly with the uh, few laps of yellow since the caution period, that we'd have uh, anybody running out of fuel. Well, unless they just didn't get it all in, Jeremy. Yeah, right. Well, if he's short on fuel, could be a pickup problem. Maybe just not getting into the, the fuel pickup. Rondé, 77, has got the 69 car sitting right behind him. Super consistent again by, by Al Carter, 58.59 that time, 58.61 the lap before, 58.86 the lap before that. What a great job, Al Carter. He's doing in the lead of this race. Chris Green in that 69 car is uh, two laps off the lead. Yeah, he just said that on that lap, the fastest lap of the race to yeah. Chris Green to show what, might, what could have been. Oh, Trent Hinman has a look. Again, he's having to defend as the Matt Plum McLaren, the 76 car, fighting back from whatever issues it had when it was leading the race, trying to go around the outside in the inner loop. Didn't happen. Uh, we're still green, by the way. Three minutes left. Nicole Rondé, quick again in the first sector. Yeah, and there's uh, only... Three seconds away from the lead, Jeremy. Yep, Trent Hinman's only a couple of seconds behind him, and Matt Plum is uh, closing in on Trent Hinman too, so he's yeah, made Trent, progress. Trent has struggled since the restart. I, I'm not sure whether the, what the tyre situation was, whether they didn't pressure them right, but he doesn't seem to have the grip. And he's been just dropping down slowly. He can't fight either. He fights as hard as he can. But guys are driving around the outside of him and having more grip, and that, that isn't Trent. One of the leaders on the race track, is this going to be... One more I, after this. I think so. I don't think they're going to get the white flag this time. It's going to be close, though. Let me have a look at the start and stand. through here now, no, we should be OK. I look at the start and stand. The white flag is not in hand down there. If they come onto the start line, and it would have been. No white flag this time. So one more to go. Three and a half miles. Two more to go. Uh, sorry, one more after this one is what I meant to say. Yep. Meantime, oh, I don't think Nico Rondier will like that as Chris... Green goes by him, he's a lapped car. Unless he can get a draft and help him get towards the leaders, of course, then he'll love it. Guy Cosmo has gone past Matt Plum for fifth position into turn one. No, check that. That's not correct, that was Trent Hinman ahead of Matt Plum. 1 minute 58.42 again, Al Carter. Boy, what a job he is doing under pressure at the front of this field. He's not used to running out front in races like this. 76 goes through. That is the pass. Matt Plum has gone past Trent Hinman. He was lining him up going through the S's. And Guy Cosmo is the next car back. It's the same car as Trent Hinman's got, but he's got so much more grip. Extraordinary. Great rear guard action fought by Trent, but he just hasn't got the pace today. Meantime, the leaders halfway around their penultimate lap tied together on a six tenths of a second length piece of bungee cord. I'm not sure what's happened to the number 28 car, the RS1 uh, uh, Porsche Cayman GT4 with Dylan McAvan at the wheel in his closing stages because he's been well off the pace.
pace, which is unusual for that car. Everybody putting their fastest laps of the race in now. Yeah. Everybody under two minutes in the GS field there, apart from that 28 Porsche. 58-4 for the leader, 58-2 for Nico Rondé. And the leaders, half a second now, they'll get the white flag this time around with 25 seconds to go of the two hours. We've not had two hours of racing. Yep. There is the white flag. White flag is in hand and being waved. And all the way to the pit wall for the leader. Al Carter, meantime, behind the two Porsches are scrapping it out. Trent Hinman's gone all the way to the left. He's got to stay there now. This might be a chance. He drifts back into the middle of the road and to the right hand, but can Guy Cosmo do the over and under? He can't. Super lit on the bridge by him. Off! The lead is off! Carter's off, and he's going to hit the wall hard, and the S is here. He's, got, he's managed to save it somehow. Extraordinary. Off at the bottom of the uphill S's, backwards onto the track, spins the wheel round and get him pointing in the right direction, but he's handed the race to the Ford, and the Dean Martin and Nico Ronde is in second. And, and I just wonder if Dean Martin had to check up there. No, he didn't. He's got through. That means that Matt Plum's back up into third, and Trent Hinman, I think, has got back into fourth. The ST battle comes through, the two brothers, half a second between them. Oh, this could get nasty as well, couldn't it? With in third place, Eric Voss, the third of the minis in fourth position. Al Carter turns in at the bottom of the hill, misses the apex by miles, and gets onto the kerb. Was there a touch? Was there a touch? Was there a touch? Yeah, there was a side-by-side -side touch at the 59 Ford. Yeah, but uh, uh, Uzal made a mistake. He was, I could see as he came past the start finish line, he was watching his mirrors. That's the first time he'd done that in the last half a dozen laps. If he'd have just focused forward, he'd have been fine. He made that mistake there. He turned in too late. They got the, the, oh, the Ford. Oh, no, I'm up. sorry. No, no, no. The Ford can't go up the inside there, Oh, yes, Jeremy. it can when you made a mistake like that. He was clear alongside him. He was going past before. Uh, no, I, if there'd I, been no car on the outside there, the Ford would have gone off. No, he went in no, too no, no, fast. No, 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 no. Completely disagree. Okay. On that one. Let's see because how the let's see, see how the stewards how, call how it. He missed his turning point and he slid on wide. And that gave the opportunity. Otherwise, there's no way the Ford could have accelerated alongside him. I think. Here yeah. comes the Ford to take the win. Dean Martin will finish off. A great race between himself and uh, Dean Martin and uh, Jack Rouse Jr. First on the road, there will be a review of that pass, no doubt. Martin Rondé, Plum in third position, then Hindman in fourth. So Ford, McLaren, McLaren, Porsche, Guy Cosmo, what a drive back to fifth position. Cameron Lawrence and Al Carter is in seventh position ahead of Mark Miller, but only just in ST. We're waiting for the cars to finish. The two minis coming home in team formation virtually. What a great last lap this has been by Eric Voss, though. He's closed down on Mark Pombo in the second of the two minis. He goes very wide out of turn 10. He hasn't given this up, trying to get a run, but he's too far back. It'll be Matt from Mark, 73 from 52. JCW mini team go wild on the pit wall. And Eric Voss will come through in third position. Let's head to the pit lane for some reaction first from Shea Adam. Well, the first thing that was said is happy birthday, Jack Rush Jr. Your first win in this series in a very long time. And it's your birthday too? Uh, it is tomorrow, yeah. The guys did an awesome job. Uh, how exciting, you know. Uh, our sponsor, Nano Pro MT and Ford, uh, Roush Performance, Corvo Motorsports. I can't be happy for everyone, but yeah, it's a really good day. Last year, this was one of the rare tracks that the Ford didn't get a win at. Now we can say that's fixed. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And to Jim Roller. He is with the ST Mini JCW team. What a race it's been for them. Cars that were literally on fire earlier on in the week with extinguishing purple, extinguishing violet. It was all over the pit lane. And they have come back Phoenix-like, literally, to first and second on the podium ahead of the much-fancied Porsche of Eric Voss. And Jeff Mosing, what a great story that is as well with Jeff in... Uh, the big Porsche accident yesterday. 
Jim Roller is with Derek Jones, who did such a great job early on and scythed his way through the field. Jim? That was a great first stint, and uh, your boy brought it home. It was amazing. We were so lucky to have this car. Such an amazing car. I blew it on the start, went from P2 back to P12, had to make my way back up to P3. So much fun out there today. We love the car, love the rain. It was pretty crazy out there. Just amazing. Thank you, Mini USA. Thank you, LIP Motorsports. Thank you, Atelier, everybody, Pombo Racing. Just incredible day. Now, in the past, you guys have wanted the rain. You guys were really quick in the dry today. Where'd you guys find all the speed in the dry? Honestly, we were uh, worried about it, but actually our tires held up so much better than everybody else's. So our long run pace was so much better than the Caymans. Like, they started wiggling around 10 laps into it. We could keep on going. So push, push, push. All right. Well, congratulations. Great victory for the mini guys. Confirmed from race control. No further action on yeah. the 59 and 99. That race, that result still, of course, provisional till post-race tech, but not no uh, no harm, no foul as they saw it from that. So they side with Jeremy. And uh, that's going to make the next race interesting. Uh, points <laughs> positions. I'll uh, get back to that in a moment. Okay. Just, just first of all, a quick note. Uh, the last win, the most recent win for Dean Martin in this championship was at Tababa Motorsports Park back in 2010 for Jack Rouse Jr. It was uh, at Lime Rock Park in 2013. So a great win for, for, those, uh, for those two. It's a sixth win for Dean Martin, the 11th overall for Jack Rouse Jr., who finished third in this championship in 2010, second in 2011. So you got a, they, both those two got a huge amount of experience here. They did an absolutely excellent job today and uh, how good it is for that core motorsports team which is uh, Dean Martin one of the principals of course uh, and uh, it's been a fine victory for them. I feel so badly for automatic racing particularly Al Carter, uh, Steve Phillips and of course Rob Eklund Jr. very much part of that operation because they had that they they it seemed to me like Al got a little bit defensive just when he didn't need to uh, because he had the pace um, and he got he got caught out but still it was a brilliant run by that entire team uh, it's a shame they're going to have to make do with a seventh place finish. Uh, Jim Rawlats can see Al Carter. He, he is heading to Victory Lane. He's got his helmet on. I don't think he's very happy uh, with the where the race finished. Uh, we've got a, a couple of moments. The Mini just making its way into Pit Lane, into Victory Lane here at the moment. What a fantastic, uh, what a fantastic race. Uh, spoiled by the red flag in the middle, but nothing we, anybody could do about that. It was the right call. Uh, and Jim Roller uh, is uh, watching a bit of good sportsmanship down there in the uh, victory circle. Al, that was, uh, that was a pretty classy moment. Um, you drove a hell of a race, got knocked off going up the S's, and uh, you walked into victory lane and congratulated... Uh, uh, congratulated, Dean. That was uh, that was pretty classy. Hell of a job, man. Yeah, you know, uh, I wanted it so bad for the automatic racing team and for the Stoner Care Car. And you know, we're kind of like the little team that could. And uh, I would tell anybody that listened that we had a car and I could run it. And uh, you know, we proved that today. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, would have been nice to do that. You know, it was tough battling with the all-time race winner ever in the Continental Series. So to battle with a good friend like Matt, and uh, you know, that was awesome. Took a little bit off our tires. We didn't change tires that whole race. So that last three laps. Um, I was losing a little bit of the front end, so that's why Dean was able to kind of get right there. And then coming to the end, I didn't know where I was. I couldn't see him in the mirrors. Uh, I just knew that he was there, so I tried to, uh, you know, give him enough room without giving him too much room, and that's, uh, that's where we happened. It would have been nice to be on the podium because uh, our team worked hard, and we did have a great run, so I appreciate I had a lot of waves and other stuff. So, again, thanks to all our friends at uh, Stoner Car Care and Invisible Glass, and uh, say hi back to everybody in Delaware. And uh, that's tough, but... Uh, we proved, we proved what we need to prove today. I believe in karma, Alan. I think one's going to come your way. That was a heck of a job, and you showed a lot of class. Thank you. One guy is really, really happy to be here. I mean, think back 24 hours ago, Jeff. You didn't know that you were going to be able to race. Now, Mosing Motor cor Cars on your fire suit. You're back here at the podium and uh, provisional points lead. That's a pretty good day. Yeah, I'm super fortunate. Uh, you know, uh, all the safety officials, I want to personally thank them for taking care of me yesterday and uh, making sure that I was okay uh, to race today and uh, thanks to uh, just all the MC officials and everybody putting on the event um, you know I just played it by ear and I kept trying to reassure Eric that uh, you know I really think that I might be able to get in the car today and and, uh, and not have to salvage another year uh, to, to try and take another championship so just really fortunate uh, thanks big kudos to Ken Marillo uh, absolutely nailed the setup. I know I looked like I was knew what I was doing out there, but he honestly was the one 
that got the car set up to drive like it should be. And the Continentals really worked well until the rains were, you know, coming in. But uh, uh, we just, you know, the, the car just, like I said, it was a blast to drive. And I just really was happy that uh, nothing started getting to the point of me having to come in to the pits. I mean, I just kept monitoring it and everything was fine. Adam down with uh, Jeff Morton. Great to hear his voice, and he is points leader, Jeremy. Indeed, so yeah, with the problems from Nick Lant and uh, Spencer Bapelli towards the end there. Uh, Jeff Mosey and Eric Foss will have 27 points, I reckon, depending on who got the fastest race lap. Uh, Derek Jones and Matt Pombo with that uh, victory today, didn't they? Yes, we'll, we'll have 119 points. So an eight point advantage then for Jeff uh, Mosing and Eric Foss. And in the GS category, uh, the uh, Cameron Castles and Trent Hinman will still have the lead, but instead of over Till Bettelsheimer and Mark Miller, it will now be by three points over Matt Keegan and Nicholas Rondé, 114 to 111. And Paul Holton and Matt Plum finished uh, uh, in the uh, third position today. They will be just five points further back as well. So great battle developing in GS. Uh, let's hope for the full two hours of racing next time we convene for Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge. That will be in a week's time up at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Once again, it will be live and uninterrupted coverage uh, all the way through that race, both in sound and vision, globally free. Uh, you've got no excuse not to watch it. Make sure you join us on IMSA Radio and IMSA TV together for the next round of the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge.